Good evening. Um, we have a public hearing at our Select Board Board of Health meeting on Thursday, March 8, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Um, Berkshire Brewing, Farm Brewing, per Pouring Permit uh, public hearing. So if you all want to come up, and um, that would be great. Welcome. Hi there. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you. How are good, you? Good, good. So tell us a little bit about your, what you're doing. Yeah, we'll open the hearing. <clears throat> well, uh, as you know, we've been in business for about 24 years, and uh, the industry has changed quite a bit since the beginning. There were, when we started, there were less than 500 people in the country brewing beer, and now there's over 6,000. Wow. Um, and the laws have changed a little bit, allowing... Uh, Smaller breweries have been doing it for about two years already that they are allowed to uh, have tasting rooms, tap rooms, and actually sell beer on premise, uh, both for consumption and to go. Uh, we, by nature of our growth, had uh, superseded our original licensing and we had to become a manufacturer, which precluded us from actually being able to sell beer to the public. Uh, this summer, Governor Baker uh, issued an amendment to the existing farmer brewer law allowing breweries of our size to be able to have a tap room which would allow us to sell beer for consumption on premise uh, but does not allow us to sell uh, to go. So we're uh, asking for a farmer brewer pouring license uh, to enable us to open up a small tap room in our existing facility. Did Wendy check into that as well? What's that? Did Wendy check into that yes, as well? Sure. She did. Great. Yep, she put everything here. She's got yeah, her signature. The application is in order. Um, we have the check. And then I just had a question about, you know, obviously you're, you're not over surfing. People are careful, tips training and all that. Where yeah, absolutely, you're, you're yes. You're protecting the public when they leave. And, uh, j just as a, a little side note, um, we were here back in uh, 2003 for a very similar request at the time. We were thinking of putting in a full-fledged uh, restaurant uh, at the facility, and, and we were, did get permission. So um. I actually remember that. So. <laughs> Hang on to those, please. A few of us do, Carol. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is there any questions anyone or um, anyone want to speak one way or the other? Yes. I'm just curious about how this process um, plays out. Is it a decision that's made uh, at today's meeting or is this an initial um, contact that, that initiates the process that you all um, sort well, of manage? Well, what, what we do is we um, the, close the public hearing um, and, uh, I, uh, and, then we vote. and then we vote to... Um, send this to the ABCC and they actually give the license. We just approve that we don't have any issues or, you know, that we send it on. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know, uh, usually the ABCC comes back within two or three weeks. It's not um, a huge deal. And then you anticipate opening up, right? Yes, we have a few modifications with the building inspector that have to be made. Um, um, I, ju I was just waiting looking at that. To, for approval before we do Your that. floor plan here. Um, I, yeah, primarily I, we were requested to, to create handicap accessible bathroom, uh, things like that. But otherwise, the space that we proposed using the building inspector saw no issues with, with that okay. as far as being able to move forward. And I, I mean, I, was just, I think I was there with Jim McGovern in the same spot just a little while ago. So I'm, I'm familiar with the area. I don't know. Did you have a chance to look at the? I did. I looked at it earlier. Yep. Yeah. Did you? No. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. 
Um, is there any other questions? Does the audience have any questions? Have one question sure. um, regarding the parking. Um, I know it's with people working there that the lot next to my house, there's always cars there and it's all fronted up and everything. I'm just wondering where patrons are going to be parking. Are they going to be parking in the back or um, on the side on the road? How how uh, many pe people do you anticipate, Gary, and and your the pattern of um, visitation? We're we're looking uh, for occupancy between fifty and sixty people. Uh, currently, we have more than adequate parking uh, in the back. Um, it was part of the original proposal. Um, it, it's around back, uh, butting the town parking. So. Uh, Everybody would be, we, we don't anticipate any street parking if, if that's an issue. Um, and there's plenty of room in our own lot. And Dick Kolaszewski did review that with us and said that he felt that there was adequate parking. I, I know that part of our complete streets um, application that we're putting in is to, you know, formalize the Leary lot, in which back. Back, backs up to your property. So that would hopefully, um, you know, provide more parking as well. And there's already access through the existing fence there, so if we were yeah. using that parking as well, there's access for people. I, I know that we that was part of our plan was to, um, you know, provide that parking, more formalized parking, and make it um, more attractive there, down there, and make people aware that that was available. And just a question to the to the resident who's close by: Is there a um, are you seeing any problems with the parking? You said ruts and stuff. Is there well, something that could be changed to make it a little easier for people to park? They have the Saturday open houses. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been people parking along the road. Okay. And alongside my house mm -hmm. and up on the hill by my house. And that's so if we could I'm, direct that a little bit better with signage or something. Yeah, and that's what I'm concerned about. Okay. Well. What? What's that? Second down as well. Okay. okay. We'll we'll try to um, try to encourage more parking at the Leary lot and try to get that going um, as soon as possible. And maybe if there's anything that you can do to guide. Um, we, we can certainly put up signage as well to facilitate. Yeah, we, we have installed a six foot high stockade fence that goes from the corner boundaries. Of, of both of our properties. So mm -hmm. um, it's definitely defined as to what is the brewery and what isn't. Yeah, I wonder if, um, if, if any other additional signage, maybe just park in this lot over here, yeah. and just people who aren't familiar and coming for the first time and maybe alleviate some of the parking that's around by the neighbors, anything you could do to help that. So and we could talk with the, you know, yeah. have the police, you know, just have John keep an eye on what's I, going I don't on think you have to go to the extent of making a formal complaint you can just let us know let us know if you yeah you know, and we can try we to, can do to help to try we, and like I said we um, fully intend tend to try to do something with the Leary lot to support the project Businesses and everything so, down through there the not background. not just your business but right. businesses in general we really want to try to encourage make it more attractive and, get some and easier parking. access and and yeah and certainly if that when yeah. that comes to fruition, we can easily put a sign on the existing posts that says That'd additional parking yes. in this direction. Kind of yeah. or something. That'd yeah. be that would be wonderful. That would be great. Yep. Good. We can make sure that that transitions better. Uh, just, <clears throat> I had uh, two more questions pertaining to specifics about hours. Are we looking at late night? Um, and also, is there an entertainment component that will be involved, whether it be live music that will be in this space? Just some of those. Um, we have a music or entertainment uh, permit if they do do specialized kind of stuff um, that you know you have to apply for that so it's not it's not something that we're intending to do we're not expecting to bring in you know live, uh, acts. live acts of music or whatever there'll be you know quiet background music in the tap room but the idea is more to promote sort of a convivial atmosphere where people can have a beer or two and talk to one another and enjoy being part of the brewery process, not to create a, a nightclub. Okay. Yeah. And, and the hours? Oh, the hours? Uh, we have requested seven days noontime till uh, the latest would be 8 o'clock on uh, Friday night. Friday and Saturday or something. And then 7 o'clock um, for the rest of the nights. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I guess I don't, I don't really have any other questions because um, I'm familiar enough with what yeah. your um, operation is. So. Is there any other questions from the audience at all? Yes. Yeah, I would just like to speak in favor because they have very good beer. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, they're good. They're um, a wonderful company to have in town. So Absolutely. thank you. Um, I will close the hearing then. Uh, take a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there any other discussion? No. I'll take a motion to approve this, to send this on to the ABCC. A motion to approve? The, pour, uh, the, the pouring, pour, pouring license. Pouring mm -hmm. license for virtue approval. Yeah. And I'll, sec so, I'll yeah. second that motion. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so we have to all sign that. Yep. You know what? Uh, I'm going to give this. Are you? Um, I have a file for her, so I'm good. Okay. Y did you? Uh, I made the motion. Yeah, let me just write that. Seconds. Right, but what time? Don't want to mess her up. At uh, 642. 642, we close the hearing. Okay. I'm sorry, we don't have any anyone here. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have you. Flying yeah, solo. I know. Well. Wow. Bare minimum here. So we'll send that up, uh, Wendy and Pat send that on to. Thank, Thank you very much. much. And Thank if you. there's any issues, they will be in touch. <laughs> oh, um, I just wanted to ask a question now, now that it's closed. Do you, do you have any thoughts for? Um, you know, I knew eventually at one point you talked about a restaurant or any other. I mean, you'll take this one step at a time, I'm sure, but. Um, you know, we'd always love to see. That would be, I think, way down the road. Yeah. Um, right now, where we had proposed to do the restaurant is really filled up with a lot of storage. Yep. So um, it, it really doesn't lend itself at this point. Okay. But uh, this could be a beginning. We'll see how it Keep flies. Keep your mind open. <laughs> we'd love to see an expansion. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's become the thing to yeah. bop from one brewery to another. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We'll see how it safely. goes. Safely. Yeah, <laughs> safely. Right. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. Okay, thanks. And, and thanks to the public for And thank coming. you for coming in, neighbors, everyone being supportive. Thank you. Thanks very much. We really appreciate it, guys. Okay. Um, so do you want to start our meeting? Yeah, we can go back to the, I'm going to make a statement. Yeah. We have no minutes or anything, so we'll just go. Okay. Selectman's comments. All right. Um, I would like to read a statement. I wish to read a statement clarifying a comments made at our meeting on February 21st, 2018. At that time, I said we had spoken with council about appointments. Council has arrived for the planning board meeting on Tuesday, February 20th, and before the meeting, I spoke with him about appointments by the select board. I had this conversation with council and it did not involve other members of the select board. Town Council gave no instruction with respect to Mr. Clean's volunteering for the ZBA, but advised generally that the select board is not obligated to make particular appointments simply because an application or inquiry has been made. Select board's appointing authority is discretionary. Okay. I, I will just give it to you, okay? There. It's okay, it's all right. <laughs> um, here is um, like a license. Uh, we can just read Wendy's report. Oh, you know what? Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else have any? I don't know. Um, I had I had select board comments. <coughs> I'm just gonna wait. Rachel, are you here for something? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna um, when, Wendy's away this afternoon, uh, this evening. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read the town administrator's report. So <laughs> bear with me a little bit. Um, so liquor licenses, uh, the town has reached its quota um, two for section 15, which is off premises, all alcohol licenses. 
um, and with applications received and expected to be received, um, we'll, have, we'll not have enough uh, Section 15 off-premise wine and malt. Oh, see, excuse me. Yeah, you will not have enough Section 15 off-premise wine and malt licenses to accept applications. Um, let's see. It says uh, your handout. Um, you have a handout in your packet detailing the licenses, the quotas, licenses issued, and licenses available. Um, the process to add to our quota is as follows. Select board votes to place a warrant article specifying the request uh, for additional licenses. Town meeting needs to vote. Uh, sent, uh, send a request to the legislature. Um, we should discuss this at the next meeting. Uh, Police Chief Pachurik tells me he has no problem with the town requesting additional licenses. Um, I have this in your next meeting agenda. So there's a chart yeah. in there, which I'm not sure if you've got. Or um, She did print out all the, all yeah, the, the alcohol beverages control commission, you know, most frequently asked questions. And then there is a separate section, which I'm not sure. What I'm, I'm not sure if I'm... I, I know that we, uh, I mean, we could think about this. Obviously, we should think about this because yes. it's a business thing. Here it is. But um, my, my only problem is. Uh, I know where you're going with that. I, I want to make sure that. We don't wind up with a ton of marijuana places. Yeah, yes. I want to only so, have one marijuana place. Yeah, I think, I think it was, you know, so if you look at this, um, which we have copies, but um, so we have plenty of, of all. You know, this is restaurants, and they serve everything. Um, very few um, on-premises just have beer and wine. You know, restaurants just do beer and wine. We have um, five available. There's one pending, which may be the one we just had. Uh, the Veterans Club, we have, you know, no quota on that for, you know, one day DA or somebody, right. Yankee does something. We have plenty of, uh, plenty of that. Um, the only is uh, the package store sale of liquor consumed off-premises. Um, we have two, and we've used two, so we have no licenses available for a package store. Um, and I think there are one. There's one pending, so I don't think we're looking for a ton, but maybe um, just to I, give us yeah, some Yeah, but leeway. I don't. I think it's. I think it's the alcohol licenses, like in a restaurant. Right. And so we'll have to clarify that. With yeah. Council, maybe. I, I. I don't. I don't think that we're going to be stuck having more marijuana. No, but on the other hand, I mean, we've existed with what we have for a long time. Do you think the, is there a big need to expand that? I think just business wanted, uh, we had a business that was looking to, to sell. So, you know, I think some of these laws are go back to the blue laws, you know, where you didn't yeah. sell oh, it to any, yeah. you, you know, nobody, you know, we just couldn't do anything. So right. I'm not opposed to looking at, you know, one or two more. I don't want, obviously, we yeah. Be a need for a ton of these around the place. Um, I, I, I would I'm just be, concerned yeah. about the proper process because mm -hmm. if it's uh, if you go for a couple more, then then do you get into a lottery system? How do you a, a, appropriate mm -hmm. the license first come first serve? Or I think you we know, should look into that all. Yeah, yeah. I I don't. I don't. She, think I think she really wanted to bring it to our attention because if we wanted to do something, we'd have to get it on town meeting. Yep. Yeah, we have somebody that's looking to do it. Maybe we could get more information from her, and she'll talk about yeah. it next meeting. So, I just wanted to review that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Trevor. So, Hi, second um. is the wastewater treatment sewer consultants. Um, she has uh, she has scheduled a. Um, oh, thank you. Um, let's see. She, uh, she says she. I have scheduled a meeting of the select board with the sewer study committee to hear proposals from consultants Stantic and uh, Prinkett. Prinkett responding to the request for responses, RFRs, uh, who could work with the town on assessing our wastewater treatment capital needs. The meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 15th at 6 p.m. And uh, she said she'll send out agendas tomorrow. So I've got that in my calendar. Yeah, I got that in my calendar too. So well, that's good. Yep. Um, we need to make sure we have an idea of what our expenses are. We've be got on. some yeah. work to be done. This winter was not very good with our Oh, Waste no. Wastewater treatment plan, so. No. Um, so, uh, number three, parcel three, RFP for Oxford site. Proposals are due March 16th at 3 p.m. and will be received and opened at FERCOG. Um, and Wendy said she will be there for that. Oh. Um, number four, landfill, landfill well monitoring. Uh, she re received a, a proposal from uh, GZA today 
and will review and discuss it with us. Um, it appears barring having to install additional well, we are likely to save on costs with this work. So I think the big unknown is do we have to put another well in, but um, so she'll look over that and get on, get with us on that. Uh, the DPW superintendent, uh, as you know, Kevin Scarborough is out with an illness. I'm working with a department, including Mike Phillips at the highway department and Keith uh, Millen at wastewater treatment, as well as Pat Kroll who processes <coughs> the bills and orders, reviewing bills, permits, and other administrative matters while he's recovering. Um, number six, the Lieutenant Governor's Office. The state has great interest in the, in the regional work Deerfield and other Franklin, Hampshire, and Hamden counties have been doing to create the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Uh, much of this work has been funded by grants, state grants. The Lieutenant Governor's Office has contacted me uh, to meet me in the town of Deerfield as the lead town with the grants to talk about this project on March 22nd at 1245. I expect this is a Western Mass tour that may be, that may be subject to schedule changes. So that's what she's planning right now. Um, yeah, we had a um, conference call and I think there are a couple of us are gonna be, I mean, I'll be there and I think Greg You had a conference was, call about the Mosquito District today, right? And yeah. I think I had something here too. Yeah, uh, um, we were gonna, well, we can go back to this. We'll go back to that after. Yeah, because okay. I have to, um, I'm, I'm hoping that you will appoint me. Okay. I, I guess I'm gonna have to be a commissioner. So. I'll, get, I'll get back to that then. Okay. Um, health insurance, there are a number of uh, administrative steps the town needs to take relative to the change, changes with the HCGIT health insurance. Um, this has to do with the collective bargaining issues, school and police in Deerfield case. Um, I'll keep you informed. So I guess there's a lot of changes with that coming well, up. Well, what they have to do is the unions have to approve, I think, right, Kim? Yeah, but there's, so. there's really not that many changes, and it's not a big dollar amount. Okay, good. But, yeah. I mean, people should, because we're trying to keep it. Yeah. Uh, so Ridge Road Affordable. is the last item she has on here, and we've been asked by Ridge Road residents. Um, there's a letter in our file. I think maybe you've seen, yeah, yeah. Um, also sent the email for maintenance to resume on the Ridge Road. Um, please review the information. Uh, this is scheduled for your next meeting. I think the residents are coming in and discuss that. So. Oh, okay. I, I um, had it here somewhere. Um, uh, anyway. So that, that is what I have for the, for the town administrator's report so far. Okay. Um, we did the hearing. I, um, I, what I need is you both to nominate me to the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District as a commissioner, and I have to apply to the State Department of Ag, and they do background check, and, mm -hmm. and we have to have five commissioners to set this up, and um, Amy from um, Southwick, um, Meredith from... Um, uh, the director of health in Northampton, Charlie Konecki from Southampton, um, and West Springfield. Is she able to? No, no. she can't. Okay. Um, Greg Lewis, and I'm hoping to have Conway appoint him because mm -hmm. we were originally going to appoint Greg. Right. Um, but Con I'm going to ask Conway to do it, and I'm we we had a not we can't form the district with less than five, so right. I'm I'm going to do it. Okay. I, I just one more house? thing. I know it's one more thing to do, but um, I well, really I believe in this, it, and so. I um, think that it's really worth it. We had a, um, we had, of course, we had a grant, and um, for this, well, we got a grant to form it, and we formed it, and it was certified, and we're. Um, you went ahead and said Yahoo right away. Right. So the state gave us another hundred and fifty thousand dollars to move forward with this, and so, but what we have to do, it was pretty ambitious. So this is one of the things that we were, we're going to modify our timeline a little bit, mm -hmm. so that because um, I, I just issue. thought I just thought there would they be would a ton a of a people that would want to be, participate yeah. as a commissioner, but. Not it's, like, not a it's not paid a paid position, not a position and <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work so but you have to it's 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 one of those quasi legal mm -hmm. um, positions so 
the state has to do background checks. You've yeah. got to get Corey, sorry. I don't know if you're going to pass. Uh, I, 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 so I, I was on when Homeland this district, Security before I did this. When this, this district's so. formed, does that mean that the town won't have to pay anymore? Um, when, oh, no, no. What this does is we form the, the grant is to help us get started and um, pr produce really the first year of well, it would be mapping of the habitat, um, testing to figure out where what we're doing. Um, so and besides the fifteen thousand, or was it twelve thousand or fifteen thousand? Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand well, eleven thousand is what we do for right, contracting. But, right. So but then we're, the state's going to give them another hundred fifty thousand dollars to. No, what? no, you're getting confused. Okay. It, the eleven thousand dollars is to hire. Um, vector disease um, control trapping. Inc. Yep. to trap and to test and to monitor what we have going on in town. What we got the grant for $35,000 to form the district was to um, do all the pre-work and, and the feasibility of, of going through the um, reclamation board. The board of um, well, the reclamation board. You have you have this huge antiquated system but it's the only way that you are able to get money from the state to fight mosquitoes so you set that you set up your mosquito district and what we did was we wrote another grant to start for the first year of process and what we're saying is that this first year we're gonna buy equipment and we're modifying the timeline so that we will not be um, fully operational in 2019 but we're going to do you know all these things we're going to do the mapping we're going to um, do surveillance and stuff like that and what I am you know the eleven thousand dollars is we're we're paying into the trust fund then you have to set up a trust fund because you prepay for services and the overhead because we're making this from the Vermont line which is Berniston all the way down to West Springfield um, the overhead should be very small, so we're talking about twenty-five hundred to four thousand dollars to join this district every year as overhead, and out of that you are able to um, purchase a menu, and you will decide what services you want every year. We want some surveillance. We've had a couple years of surveillance, so hopefully we won't have too much. We won't have to do as much because we know where our habitats are, and that's what the mapping will provide as well. And we'll just monitor them instead of having to do full-blown surveillance. But what we want to be funding towards is cleaning up our ditches and all that kind of stuff because the, one of the major advantages of a mosquito district is you are able to um, be... Um, exempt from a lot of wetlands requirements and permitting so you can work in our ditches and make water less stagnant and um you know the idea one like one of the down. things we've been talking about is cleaning up along B B bloody brook having a better um access to the elementary school and back and forth in case we had an active shooter or a um train derailment you could get the kids over faster and the idea was to clean up here and put some kind of um, walking area mm -hmm. for seniors and benches and all that but kind of stuff. We could do that without a mosquito district anyways. No, you can't I work mean, in the wetland there. Well, well if, you, if, it, if it's for the school. Kip, and Kip please. The right. whole thing I, I has just been move to. Move on, please. Just go no, on. the whole thing, the com complaints I've had from multiple years from Kelleher Drive, uh, bloody uh, par uh, properties that are uh, uh, but bloody brook um, everyone wants us to work in the in those areas and you can't so this the whole point of having the mosquito district this is what convinced me that it's worth it is that we can be able to work in our ditches and clean up the stagnant water that we have around here and that's going to be the basis up in old Deerfield, where we have the culvert from richardson's candy kitchen and Mill Village, where all that silt came down in the 2011 landslide, the whole idea is to say, oh, that is a stagnant area, and we'll be able to clean up, and we'll hopefully be able to save
permitting costs because the Mosquito District is going to recognize that as an area that needs to be cleaned up. So move if water. basically it's to move water out of town. And I, I well, think it works. I mean, make it, a motion to appoint you as commissioner. Okay. Do you second that? You want me to talk now? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because it's something you want. Well, you don't want to listen to me. The minute I start to say something, you know, Kip, Kip, Kip. Well, well Kip, so what is it? I, mean, I, I don't agree with it. We need money for all types of things. We need it for education. We need it for, you know, homeless people. We need it for seniors. And, you know, this is getting us into tracing mosquitoes. It doesn't do anything. If this was generating money to help people with diseases or to kill the mosquitoes, but just to trace them and so no. I just don't see any benefit. It if it was a big it deal, it if does. it was a big deal, the state would be doing it on their own. So went the CDC. Look at down in Florida where they had all these problems with Zika virus. The federal government's not down there doing this. You know, this is you, part they, of the reason why we're you, setting up if, the mosquito wait, district. Just, that's how money. If you have um, a mosquito district, when you have an outbreak like that, this is the, uh, that's the only avenue the money will come through. So that if you have the district set up, you could grab that money, address those issues. And like I said before, even if you, you have this, what are you going to do? You tell people, stay in the house, be careful. Just tell them to be careful anyways. No, 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 no. What? You, you, you would, we need to do a presentation for Kip a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I see your, kit, your pushback that you'd rather money I, spent other ways. And you, I know I, you don't think it's worthwhile health-wise. But as Board of Health, we've got to do what we can to try and mitigate that. And I think that there's benefits to this. I don't, it's not a save-all, for sure. And there's other issues, tick-borne illnesses and all kinds of other items. I but I was, I was I thinking and, and, that. And as a commissioner, <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping that I will make this like a bug district and not just a mosquito district because one of the things that I think is a sustainable is you um, will have a supervisor under the supervisor's license you can spray, um, do spraying, and one of the things you can do is spray perithium, which is the, you know, um, cone flower derivative I, I, I that understand keeps the that, ticks. And you can go around and you can charge people 50 bucks and you can spray in their yards. And that, I mean, to me, that's a wonderful service. But I still think that the money that you're, this is, and it just keeps growing and growing. And it, I don't know exactly what this money from the state comes from. But if it, my point again is mm -hmm. we're taking taxpayers' dollars to just track the mosquitoes. And the worst case scenario is that we, we did. know that you're right bad, about that. We did know? for the last two years or three. I'm not sure how long it's yeah. been. Two, but two years. We did do that, track and trace that so we had some data. But I think now that we have the district, we're able to actually do work um, where you could move some of that water out. I, I do get complaints from people that they, you know, a lot of stagnant water in Deerfield, and I know you probably can't fix all that. We're in a bowl, but anything you can do to do that, move that along, I think will be beneficial. And then we'll be able to, we'll be able to larvicide and treat and do it, you know, other things to kind of mitigate the issue versus just track. I mean, I agree, you're just gonna track them. You're gonna go, oh, they're there, go in your house. And, and, and I, I understand that it is important to move the water and stuff like that, but the conversations I have had recently with DEP is, it's not that cut and dry. Okay. You know, that there's still other issues that you have to deal with. Probably, but yeah. one of the things is, you know, you can declare different emergencies like you spoke of in the past, and you can clean these types of things. And I know that you spoke of the if you have a mosquito uh, district, you can. Well, I, you know, I, I've gotten conflicted information then. Well, well maybe we can then, sort that out then. Yeah, Let's try and find I, I an, think you an need answer. To, um, Charlie Konecki, we can have Charlie come and talk. And, or, or somebody else. Or, and Ka or Katie Brown, our state vet, who has been, oh, man, the workshops that we've went to have just been amazing information. And, um, again, you could... I mean, I mean, one well, of the things is, Kip, is that you do have to be informed. And, you know, we've been working on this for a couple of years. And I, I, I get it. We have but meetings it still all comes the time. Down to, my, my point of view still is, mm -hmm. is that we know the mosquitoes are bad. And we know the mosquitoes are around here. But, you know, if you get a case where, you know, uh, unfortunately someone's bitten and they've passed away from Tripoli and stuff like that, we don't close down any town. We don't close down any roads. You know, it's just... 
another thing. This is important, folks. Protect yourself. Do what you can to get rid of these things. So I'd rather see if money was being spent is to destroy the mosquitoes Agreed. or give yes. things to people that uh, right. you know. I'd rather spend eleven thousand dollars on bug spray on bu right. than just to track I, these things because we know that they're all bad or they're not all completely. bad. But well, they're all but we can get dangerous. You know, well, there's, there's but, but like Kip, five that are. Out no, of the three or four species, are. and there are about fifty species. In and the and state. I get that, but when a mosquito's so, on you, you don't. Well, so, oh, what species is this? this is a good, I got gotcha. you. You know, you squish know, it and you go I know, on. but this is part There's of a being. There's a little bit more to it than yes, the simple. Yes, it's I, part of I, being I, informed, Kip, and and knowing where the habitats are in town means where you know where you put your lava side and 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 how you spend your lava side. I mean, we had the highway department, you know lava side or catch basins mm -hmm. and they double lava side where we had the you know even in these two very dry years we had still had um west nile virus and it's really important that we try to you know take care of i mean this this fall and spring so or this winter has been extremely wet we're going to have a horrendous horrendous spring well and, and people are going to be calling crazily. Well, and this is, a, this is an attempt to try to handle those complaints. Well, I think we just need to educate. Yeah. Try a little bit more, because that certainly kept, is not buying onto the thing yet. But I think I'm yeah. hoping with education, maybe. If, if we have a couple meetings, would you come? Because, I mean, it's really important that I've, you understand. I've, I've only sat through two mosquito-related things. And you know, it's like trying to discuss the end of a ballpoint pen. I, I mean, I get, I, know it's I hard understand to, that they're dangerous. I don't, I don't see any we'll find an end game for that. Here, well, you know, I think we can well, get an answer. Well, let's for let's try to. I mean, obviously, if we can't convince you, then we're not doing a very good job. So um, we yeah, need to work I, I, on it more. I tell you, a lot of people, a lot of people tell me around. I can't believe we spend money for mosquitoes and stuff sure. like that. And they get so sick of listening to it, even like at last year's annual town meeting, they said, oh, for God's sake, just, just give, give them the, the money, money and let's move on. <laughs> it, yeah, but see, I can't help that because the finance committee doesn't approve it, so it has to be a separate I know, but the person that said that does not even believe in it. They just didn't want to hear it anymore. That's okay. You know? I know, and, but and that's we, okay. We need part, of your, part of your job is as Board of Health is you have to you have to start working at stuff that people just don't buy. Oh, yeah, and you have to work and, on and, that. And and but if we have if we have an outbreak of any kind, you have to have the structure to to receive the money, and the Mosquito District is a structure. But all right, let's just say otherwise spring, the town is on the hook for the money. You collected. I don't even know what the dangerous ones are. But let's say we did a a, a, a trapping, and we find out we collected three hundred. Mosquitoes carrying disease. What People would you do? You you would treat that area because you, you know where they are that now. Area because you know exactly where it is. So that you instead would of put just your like treating the whole, or, you and know, you, and flying you over and, and spraying the whole town. And the whole easy, reason you do surveillance is because adult deciding, which is your spraying, mm -hmm. is bad for the environment, mm -hmm. bad for your health. It's extremely so uh, expensive. If you identify, and it's not if you just have so some we, swampy areas that you think the mosquitoes are at, you, you just go and lava site anyways. Spend That's, the money on that instead of yeah, the trap. But you don't know where those species are. So the idea is you monitor, you monitor those species and, go after and you them. Speci but to me, specifically that is even, lava site. But to me, Carol, that is even crazier. But you can lava side. We lava side for less than two thousand dollars. They don't just yeah, travel. They, don't, they can go. They they don't just stay unless they, hitch they don't ride live very long. They can hitch a ride in a car you, or you I can, yeah. But most dogs. most colonies will stay in a smaller yeah. area. Yeah. And and by pinpointing the exact one of those three to four species that carry the disease, mm -hmm. you can lava side them for a very little bit of money and you're highly effective and you've you've broken the cycle and you've not d disturbed the you know the habitat and other mosquitoes and everything else because the majority right. of mosquitoes are nuisance well, mosquitoes so far we're not spending any money so well we, we my, my, I mean my my goal would be to appoint her commissioner they run through set this up obviously they they have to come I mean I have to go through the I mean I have to be Right, whether they take you know, or not. I just, I just, I have to I don't go get through the, the. I don't. I, I wish if, if I could have my way, I'd have the whole thing go away. But I, of I don't. You. So, <laughs> but I know, think, I think it won't. Once you, once you understand, I think, I think I, you'll. 
I think I, it, it makes. I think once you understand that it's the mo it's very proactive and it's the least amount of money that we can spend, but we're in a position to maximize if we have an outbreak of any kind, we're in a position to get money from the state, CDC, and to be as proactive as possible because we're already on top of the situation and we don't have to get any permission or anything because the the what the district what? The, the district it does allows you to go on private property it allows you to, to lava side side on mm -hmm. private but property yes otherwise you not you people can say no and that's why you know like cleaning out bloody brook under this district you're allowed to go in and it, you are exempted from the permitting process for most part i mean it's not completely but i think you'll have other other areas to, i mean obviously there's more education that's needed but You'll have other areas to have a, uh, your discretion and vote on um, monetary issues. I think the, well, you know if we decide to do all of that's why we're setting it up as a menu. So if you don't want to spend any money, you don't spend any money. But I think once the people the infrastructure is there, but, but the infrastructure is there, and you can ha operate what you want to do. If people don't want to clean out Bloody Brook or they don't want us to go behind Kelleher Drive and clean out the ditches, then that's fine. We right, don't have but to. But mean we still have to spend money. Be involved with this? Would you say four thousand? Less than less than what we're doing now. We can do a lot less because this is the the grant pays for at least the initial part of it, and then we just decide but, how much we want to go forward. But that's with. the that's the part that bugs me. The initial part. Well, it's because we don't Why know can't? what we want for services. If people, I think what will happen, Kip, is we will have a regular appropriation of around fifteen or twenty thousand dollars because people will see will really love the fact that we're cleaning out dishes and, and moving water. And once you've been able to do cross town, there's still going to be some maintenance. I mean, there hasn't been any maintenance for, I don't know, 20 or 25 years at least. And, and I get that because of the rules. But here again, the, the people at but DEP the rules, says this you is can't. A, no, this exempts you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get some I answers know, on that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, don't know I want to hear you your argument. To, but I, I, the, the reason why I was against more um, bureaucracy, and, well, and I ended up being one of the, well, the main supporter of this because it, it, it really makes sense from the whole um, permitting process, what you can do. I mean, it was extremely, it's been extremely frustrating. Well, why don't you generate, for years, why don't you not be able to, to go in and clean out behind people's houses? Why don't you either generate an email to DEP? Or if you have something, show it to me no, where I'll they just say. have the mosquito people come. I don't want to hear from the mosquito people because those but, aren't the yeah, people that the, can do we'll this. Get, I won't we'll get the deep. No, de somebody from the, the state. But not from the vendor. I mean, I'm talking about the, the mosquito district people that the Department of Ag that oversees the whole mosquito stuff. They're the ones that give us the permits and allow us to exempt from DEP. So it's the Department of Agriculture that yes, gives you those? Is, yes, I have to, I have to be from vetted. DEP. Right, I have to be vetted by the well, Department of Ag to get on this I would. I would like to talk to them. We should. Well, that's Absolutely. Fine. That's fine. That's exactly right. what yeah, we should Yeah, because this is the whole Department of Ag thing. Okay. We, and, need, we need to get buy-in from KIPP and, pe and people who feel yeah, like Yeah, I mean, well. I mean, like, I, yeah. he's obviously I mean, what sold point, me so. is the permitting process exemption, and the, and it makes total well, sense. Otherwise, we can never work. That's on the only. That's the only part of the whole thing that makes any sense to me. I agree. Right. You know? I, I and, mean, and, but when you told this to me, I think it was almost a year ago, mm -hmm. and you know, I had opportunities to speak with DEP about that, and they say, well, no, it does not work that right. way. Right. You know, you still have these other things to deal with. So, you know, I don't so know that these people it, we'll, know what, we'll, they're, talking know what they're talking about. And, and I get that. I'm not the kind of person I just hear one side. No, I can and have the Department so of Ag people I, come. We should. We and, should. And because it, are the, there well, different departments of the Department right. of Agriculture? You know? Well, I think we should, of course, so, we should but, flush all that out. I mean, the public yeah. are, are going to want to hear, well, maybe. <laughs> no. The public's going to want to hear, you know, I don't what, know. What we're you just said you don't want to hear about it, but we no, can I have someone come to a meeting. At well, least an educational night. I yeah. mean, especially as spring comes around and people are out, out in the yard more. Maybe the, you have a night and people come and learn about, you know, how to protect themselves and what we're doing proactively to try and solve and, some and, of the And one of the big things that I want, and the reason why I'm willing to be a commissioner, I mean, I'll take on the workload of the commissioner, is because I really want this to be a bug, bug district. I mean, everybody has problems with ticks. I mean, the ticks are just gross. And, and so one of the ways you can make this sustainable is to have a revenue source where you pay someone 50 bucks and they can come once or twice 
um, a season and spray your yard with perithium, and then you have a safe area. I have 100 acres. They can spray my whole hay field. Yeah, they could, it's cost but it would cost, cost you more than 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, it's going to cost me more. So. But, well, well, this is a, a fee. This is yeah. how this <clears throat> this district would be sustainable, Kip. I, so. And, and, the, and the whole idea is that. You know, and to that point, I mean, you, you know, I've got horses and, and dogs and stuff, yeah. and, and, and we, we, we spray them and we take care of them. And, and I've always gone under the premise, and I, everybody that I talk to, that every mosquito is dangerous because you can't take that chance, you know. We do what we can. We have standing yep. water and buckets all the time because you have horses outside. Sure. And you know, if we see mosquitoes in there, we do what we can. You can't poison the water right. for the horse, but right. you know, Keep we spray and it's stuff a, like you can you know, we, we do it. And I think that's the education is more. I agree. Important. We should do and more and of that what, too. And, and this is what this this does. Under these districts, they have all these educational materials. You can have people come in and do stuff. I mean, yeah, but it, it, it's. I guess you can tell people, but I don't think you're going to get many people to come in and sit for an hour and listen to mosquitoes. Yeah, but well, we'll see if we well, can try. Well, I, can I try. know, but I if yeah. maybe not. Uh, I don't know. Not, not we... to change subjects. Did you guys happen to read oh, this? Oh wait, I just can I just get a second? I'd rather not do it now. Oh, come on. <laughs> I need a second, Kip. Can't you do I don't it ask yourself? You for much. No, she can't. What? What? You can't second my motion. Oh, I second your motion. Go ahead. Oh, no, you didn't vote me in. Right. That's no. what I need. Oh. I need a second oh, on the motion. Oh, I'll I'd rather I'd rather wait until I talk because oh. I'm not convinced. I'll, I'm second. I'm I'll second myself then. All those in favor? Aye. Gosh. Kip, we're going to buy you in All eventually. All those opposed? Aye. <laughs> Kip, you... Uh, You're Board of Health, man. You got I understand you gotta I'm the Board of Health. Out. You gotta and, figure and, this and you, out. You should be happy because all this does is mean that I have to drive around and She's do more work. She's not going to be work. in meetings. Drive around in that <laughs> truck that gets three miles to a gallon. No, <laughs> kill, I get sixteen. Kills out of the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> and and okay. now I have to go to more meetings. Okay. You should be happy. All right. Anyway, did you happen to read this thing and, and see some of these uh, draft regulations? Yes. Did you see that? You know, and I think people should know it that the regulations would allow an applicant with a criminal history of cocaine and heroin trafficking to find employment in the recreation marijuana industry. That's why it has to be specifically and licensed by us so carefully. By the select board. Yeah, yes. and, and this other one, it was yeah, uh, brick and, uh, brick and mortar why stores. Why the commission's created an allowance for direct thing. delivery of marijuana products but from cultivators to consumers. So I thought the farmer could then open up a farm stand. But I thought they um, I thought they put that in the smoking cafes on uh, hold till next year. They are on year. hold until next year. I think yeah. they're waiting on that. They're, I hope so. They no, approved they it last the social consumption this week, establishments and the delivery And the thing delivery is still next year. Still next year. But yeah, that's kind I think, of I think this is one of these things that when people need. first heard about legalizing marijuana, they figured they bought into that fact of, well, you know, it's crazy to arrest all these people for having a little bit of pot, mm -hmm. and our jails and courts are all getting so. And you know, now it, it, it first it sounded like a big thing, and even our tax dollars is, are in oh, jeopardy we're not too. Gonna, you know, so. Oh, we're not going to make much money. We just, I just don't want to subsidize yeah. it. Oh, exactly. Um, hmm. We have to make absolutely sure we don't subsidize it, but don't worry about it. So that's why I'm not too excited about increasing our liquor situation until we you know. Exactly. exactly. not going to kill us. But. Well, whatever. We'll take a look. Yeah, he, I just want to make sure. See what Wendy has to say. She had some advice on it. Okay. So. Um, can I hit on the Green Communities yes, Grant we need application? Yes, to, to vote that. So I have a... Um, Where did you... Do you have that? I have the signing sheet, the sheet that you need to sign. Okay. Um, so this is the Green Communities Grant. So what, what's happening is um, David Keith Gilbert is working on a Green Communities Grant. That he's the chair of the Energy Committee. Yep. And he is actually doing it himself. He, the last two days he's been like head in his um, application mm -hmm. and just, just working away on this. There is, um, there is information, a packet um, in, in your stuff that details all the stuff that we're trying to uh, get accomplished. Yep. But um, just to summarize, this is some of the rec recommendations that we had going in was to replace one of the two existing boilers with uh, two smaller ones that would be more efficient so they can ramp up. Was that the elementary school? The element, yes. This is just yeah. the elementary yeah. school that we're working on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll get it. You know, it's a really highly competitive grant, um, but, but we're trying. Um, to rebuild the, the heat-related pumps 
replace uh, most fluorescent lights with LED fixtures, clean and service air handlers and um, unit heaters, uh, repair the fresh air dampener and sensors in the gym and the administration offices, replace um, two doors at the south exit um, of the gym, which are really rusting out and they're, they're in bad shape, um, and put flow restriction uh, aerators on faucets um, and fix the freezer door. So they, they went through and just kind of, they, a couple weeks ago they went through with Bob Lesko and, and everybody there to try and see where they could, you know, they had this grant, it, was, it just came out real quick and you had to turn it in real quick. So they said, well, if we had this grant, what could we do? And, and then, you know, just uh, the, the boilers are running at about 85% efficiency right now. They thought, it, you know, if we had this money and we could use this, this would be one way that we could save and, and just efficiently run the school better with uh, ramping up the heat. Because right now you've one, most times, I guess, one boiler is all you need. Actually, it's more than what you need. Um, so that a lot of times you could run it on a smaller one. And then on a big day, instead of, you know, on a real cold day, instead of running both big ones, you could run one and like one or two of the others. So it's not, you can kind of just stag stagnate, you know, how you're doing the, the load on that. So there's, if you read through this, Kip, there's all kinds of information and photos on what they wanted to do. And they've done a lot of work in the past. Well, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I sometimes I lose my train of thought. Go ahead, go ahead. But, I, no, uh, no problem. And, and this, I, I agree that a lot of these things are very important, uh, but the most important thing is missing from the list, and What's that's that? insulation. Because, okay. you know, if, they didn't if, if you that. go back 30 years ago, the way most homes insulate. were built with two-by-fours and stuff sure, like that, sure. the average home used, say, 100,000 BTUs. Well, you know, even though the building codes and the energy codes have changed and the air tightness of the whole nine yards, you know, you can heat the same house with half the amount of BTUs, you know, 48 to 50,000 BTUs. Better, so when I see wall. all these, you know, big boilers, more efficient boilers, that's true. But part of the process is to keep the heat in the building. Do you know where we could do that? Uh, I mean, I know we did a lot of insulation in the roof, or some insulation in the I'm new not roof. Sure if I don't know what Green that. Communities gives you money for insulation. I that think they do, but they I don't know if there was. It, it seems kind of crazy that they would areas. buy new boilers and they wouldn't buy insulation. I mean, insulation is like a but pennies on the dollar compared to a building like that. How do you how do you do that? I know, like a two by four wall, you insulate. I, I know I'm not sure roof, if you so I can insulate. We, we we did put the insulation on the roof, which was. Marginal, marginal. Best. you know, it's, I think it's an R10, right. so it, 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 yep. it's really poor. Um, and, and the way that the majority of that is built, you know, you can't easily put insulation in. But you could go section by section and replace the ceiling areas and put insulation in there. Yes, and I think there were some of those where we had slanted ceilings. I thought, I could be wrong, but I thought they were thinking about dropping those down and um, and, putting and then the putting some in. insulation up there as well. I've got to look through this again, but yeah. you know that's why they felt like changing the doors. They were they were rusting and leaking, and um, there were other areas that they could they could work on. But um, and, and one of the but, things that I, if you're working with these people, you can reach out. And, and I keep saying this to to every part of the town I deal with. You know, you can call like an insulation contractor, and they'll walk through the building. They, they and did. They, they did? Yes. And they didn't give them any ideas on how to... Well, they did. These are the, these are the recommendations. Oh, were they insulation contractors? I believe so, because I think they reached out to... Um, what's the name of the company there? Uh, Save... Um, Mass Save? Mass Save. And, I, and then I think... So I think that's... And then Erickson, or Lon Erickson, I think is his name. He's from... What's the name of the company? Universal Electric. So he was, he's done some, a lot of Green Communities grants, and he's done some stuff for our, our town and our school. So there has been stuff that's been done in the past. Yeah. But these were the items that kind of fit the grant this year, and they thought they would go for. If it, if it passes, great. It's, you know, it's grant money, and we could do this stuff and maybe work on some other ideas. But yeah. if it doesn't, you know, then we just... We're good. We don't have to spend any money, but we just thought that these you items know, it, would be the best way to start. And, and you're right. I mean, anything anything you do is better. It's just that yep. you know what I'm saying. That I do. If you if you put the insulation in, you, it's going to require less BTUs to heat it, so it's Absolutely. less going to burn and cheaper. Yep. You know, when I see things like this door and it talks about rusty, I mean, really? I mean, any janitor with a piece of sandpaper and a paint can 
could fix this in yeah, 15 I think they, minutes. I think they could. But yet, were they, I mean, those are the same things that we saw when we did the roof. Yep. And, and I've seen them. I, I, just, I think the door is I, shot in some areas. Like, it doesn't. But this did, you read, yeah, I guess this, what I'm saying, this, this did is, not uh, happen yesterday. Oh, I agree. You know? I agree and, with you. And it's like, well, really? I agree. Uh, well, there's some, a lot of, you know, I was showing you the bathroom stuff that I'd like to do there eventually. Yeah, that, and, but the state police, I think, isn't this the door where the state police want to replace anyway? They do, because yeah. they, they don't, it's not safe. Yeah. Um, or it's not, I mean, it can be whatever. Obviously, yeah, we want to make it safer. Um, just aging out. Um, so anyway, so they're, they're hoping to get our vote on this, that they could go go ahead and the grant's got to yeah. go in tomorrow oh, I, and I see if they can it. Make, it, make it happen. So sure. um, I would make a motion to um, vote in support and accept um, or, or to apply, vote and to submit and sign the uh, Green Communities Grant. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion? Nope. None. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Did Was Bob Lesko involved with any of this yes. at all? Yes. Yeah. Yep. He did. He did do some. Bob, and then there's, there's. I can give you a lot of email chain on this from um, Lawn, and then there's a guy, Jamrog, I think was the guy that mm -hmm. works on our boilers over there, and he had some some information as well. But if you look through this, there's a, you'll probably understand this a lot more than me, Kip. But there's there's from a lot looking of at these things, you know, the second beside, well, the installation is not on this list, but the the second most important thing is is changing out the fluorescent lights to LEDs. Because yep. the average fluorescent bulb is 60 watts, and the LEDs are 9 or 11. Wow. So What a difference. Yeah. And yep. you, it's you, huge. you start adding that up, it, it's really big. Yeah. And then I think with the, the other thing was with the lights, they can get a little bit brighter. They were going to add a few um, because when we tinted the windows for security um, from... It got darker. Trooper Carmile asked us to, you know, to kind of make it a little safer in the front. It really darkened the, the hallways, so they want to brighten that up a little bit, too. Um, okay. Did uh, was there some discussion? I'm not trying to jump out of. Go ahead. More here. But was there some discussion about the landfill solar type thing we were going to talk about tonight, or no? So I, I, had, a, I didn't have any information. Mm, I, I had a brief conversation so. with Wendy, and I know that she's going to bring it up. Um, and there was something to do with yet another grant to get somebody to do a study on solar at the, at the, the, landfill. the, the landfill. And, I, and apparently there's been some issues with the solar array at the old Deerfield um, uh, sewer plant. Oh, and I, yes. I don't know either it's not working properly or not right. getting it, me, we're not getting creative right. or something. It never, it never, it never there was always some issues. Yes. And, and what I was saying to Wendy this evening is it almost, and, I, and this is why I want to bring it up so you can think about it, is it almost seems better that the town take the approach like some of the other private landowners in town where we make a deal with somebody to lease the land and let them build it, let them maintain it, let them get the money and stuff, and they just pay us a, a pilot payment like the ones at uh, TrueCorp. We just get a check of $50,000 a year and we got no headaches. Right. You know, I don't know, we spent, I think Wendy said she believes it was somewhere around $75,000, $80,000 down at the wastewater plant in Old Deerfield. You know, okay. but we haven't seen any revenue, and there's more money now to get things to work right. And I see. So it, it, it was a, a large, I don't want to say large, but there was a lot of money laid out by the taxpayers. Right. We're not seeing any return on it, and there's ongoing issues. And, and maybe we the ball gets struck. Check from it. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's all, you know, volunteers and stuff. So if. She did have somebody in mind that she was talking about. She did, about and, and, and that's why I kind of just I thought, said. I thought yeah, the old Deerfield thing was all 100% grant. I don't know. It I, that's, was, I don't know, but no, that's what she it, said. There was something about seventy-four thousand. No, that was that was a grant. It was a green. It was one of our first green communities grant. But it was all. I don't know, but well, I just I just wanted to throw that but out so you could think about we it. We wouldn't that. have done it if it wasn't a and grant. Then talk. And that was what the problem is. We ended up having to use a state, one of the, you know, contractors on the. Oh, well, so right. I guess the bottom line is, regardless whether we didn't spend, we're not getting anything out of it. Where the other one, we're getting, well, we haven't gotten the, the discount on our rates yet because right. they're still messed up. But the, the money, the, the money. tax money is coming in. So. And, and to be fair, and to be fair, it's just all these solar projects have been really hard to hook up. 
with Eversource. I mean, yeah. Same with why the digester. We've been, and, we've been having a problem with our and, credits. And I don't, I don't know, but from my conversations with people in the industry and stuff like that, it's almost an intentional thing because mm -hmm. they've been pushing back because they have to pay more for it than they do if they buy it off the grid. Right, right. So. I know. Yeah, so we should yeah talk to Wendy and see what she has to say next week on that. Um, we need to vote um, the overlay yes. for sure. Yep. Um, I so, mean, if we're running out of time, it's okay, but we need to do the overlay for sure. I make so. a, I make a motion to um, to recommend to the assessors release a hundred thousand from the excess overlay. I'll second the motion. Um, uh, did I? I don't know if um, I just want to make sure that. Um, John Cordero, he said this was okay. Well, I think this is a recommendation to them, and we'll see what they say back. But I think, you know, this is what oh, Brenda usually, had looked at it and felt. And so oh. I think this is the first parade to say, look, oh, okay. they, they've done the study. They think they think they'll still be they, safe with some money in there, and we'll see what he says coming back. Oh, okay. I think it's the usually, first kind of talk. Oh, all right. Because so, usually they give us a number that they're... I think th they will. So this did not come from the assessors that came no, from... No, it came... I think Brenda was Brenda. looking at it, and um, and Wendy talked about it, and so we were going to ask the oh, assessors okay. if they okay. felt that this was um, an appropriate number. Uh, then I just want to make sure the minutes are clear that... Um, that we're requesting, we're, we're, recommend. Okay. We're not... Um, Superseding any? No, no, just, no. This is a, requ just, a request to release. Right. We're going through the f formal requesting Absolutely. of a release. Yep. And that we're hoping and, to have conversation with them. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I hope John Cordero, if he's watching, is for sure knows that we're not sending him demanding money. No, no. I, okay. I think it's a, it's clearly right. as a it's as usually, a request for a comes, release. It comes usually in a different. Yeah. You know, we had a conversation and yep. then. Well, I think they were looking at it. I was talking to Brenda about it. They were looking at, you know, they were holding it oh, for okay. a while on some other stuff, and then that kind of, I, I, Brenda would know a little bit more than okay, I, but no, she, no, no, that's she fine. felt like this was going to be safe for everybody um, with some of the changes okay. in the in the law. So. I, I, I just, it's just that when, as a board, you go, I want your money. Oh, yeah, no, it's, no, a, it's a, a, to recommend to release is all. Yeah, okay. Yep. And we'll just wait to hear back from. Yep. Um, now the complete streets. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, we have to have this policy. This policy has been modified a little bit from what we already voted. Yep. Um, did Did you any? I have either, not read it yet, so I, I got it tonight, I, I, and I, I want to I, read it. I I did read it, and I and I do have a question. Okay. I, I understood what it said, obviously, but what is his intentions? I mean, what, this is what, is the, what is this document's intention? The, the, this is one of the hoops you have to draw, uh, jump through to, to get apply money. for the, the complete streets. You okay. have to have some kind of policy. Okay, and, and we, this is um, supposed to be our official policy? This and would be what an we did um, a couple years ago, we um, came up with it, or a year ago, we came up with this policy. We and, just never ratified it yet, right? Well, no, we did, and we sent it in, and apparently it didn't fit. I mean, it didn't address one of the oh, things, so okay. it came back, and it just sat here, and no one did anything with I it. I got you. So we are revising it and sending it back out. Well, I think uh, when, it, Wendy revised it based on the comments that they had sent to us. Okay. And um, so this is a revised policy that we're voting, and we just voted again and then send it back in, and hopefully then we'll have checked off the boxes so we can apply for money. Okay. To do, you know, work on the Leary lot and sidewalks and stuff like and that. And I think um, well, Diana has done some I was stuff, just, and she was going to come in and talk with us about it next week. Some of the things I read in here, it, it, it's kind of funny, and, and I just happened to pick this thing out about, you know, we're going to maintain a comprehensive inventory of all the pedestrian and bike facility infrastructures and prior, prioritize projects to eliminate gaps in sidewalks and bike bikeways and do we have any bikeways in Deerfield? Or well, I guess you can go center town the sidewalks. Deerfield at, at East Deerfield rail yards we have the oh, okay. parking lot yeah. area and but this is this I, is why you have to do this because then you are eligible for money to paint that big and, and we have the little bike you know rack out here and we have a bike rack at at um, the elementary school in our frontier, so you kind of know. Well, a bike rack here and there is a couple hundred dollars. It almost seems like I'd 
volunteer Rather to pay like, for it than spend no, my time doing it. Kip. Kip, we got that through a grant. I know, I'm sure you did. So <laughs> come on. I, we hustle money all the time. Well, I, but my this point is, is, is sometimes hustling the money takes so much time, it's not worth it. Right. Well, I was going to say, well, we'll get a up. job and pay for it. We'll but I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. You should be happy that we are trying to do this. He's okay. Happy. He'll be happy. So, do you want to pick one that we all sign, or no? We don't have to do anything. This is just so the first meeting, just, and um, and oh. Wendy will bring it up next week Wait, for Diana. So, Diana yeah, and Diana's going to have some discussions. Okay. So we have just to figure out what we want uh, as like our first project. So we have budgets to go over. Um, one of the. Um, uh oh. Budgets that. Uh, I just want you to see this. It's got your name, Rob. It's in my folder. I think oh. you both have. And she might have just put it in the wrong one. You should have a. You should have oh. one too. Yeah, I was just going to say I have maybe. A, oh, I have yours. <laughs> well, Do you have different numbers on yours? I don't, <laughs> right. I don't know, but I no, guess. it's all the same. Um, I just wanted to um, address the fact that the board of health budget was going to change a little bit. We're going to go down to. 1875 for the tick testing. Um, I it the the original. Which line was that? The, what, oh, the, board of health. Yeah, the <coughs> board original amount was 2500, and it's going to go down to uh, 1875, which is 125 at 15 dollars. And what that is, Kip, is. I, understand. I know negotiated the t the tick testing with um, UMass. So if we well. pay fifteen dollars, then the um, person who wants to send in a tick will pay fifteen dollars instead of two hundred dollars. And there was an addition of was it seven hundred dollars or six hundred dollars for the water testing? Seven hundred and fifty dollars is um, well. That's for 10 at 75, but I think oh, we no, could no. probably do I, I was start about out the, the five. Well testing. Yeah, I think we can do five. Okay. Um, I talked to Dick again, and um, he thinks maybe, you know, maybe five would be okay. But he had originally given me 10, but five might be okay. He just wants the ability to test people's wells if necessary mm -hmm. for contamination, and okay. it's $75, about $75. Uh, a test. Okay. And, and I'm just trying to learn here again. In situations where you have, it's not a large dollar amount, every department has these expense accounts. Couldn't they just, if you have a $1,000, $2,000 expense account, that money be taken from there to do these? Well, usually the finance committee wants to know how you're spending the money. But they, so, you know, if you, I don't care what department it is. I don't care if it's a town hall or the highway department. They say four thousand dollars for tools or three thousand mm -hmm. dollars for this. I mean, you know, there's big dollar amounts for that aren't really, you know, it's it's pretty vague. What's what what does shop equipment mean? I mean, it could be anything from a screwdriver to paper towels. And, I know. You know, well, and I guess that's yeah. what I'm saying that you know, if if the board of health has a you know expense item, and I'm not talking twenty thousand dollars. I'm saying right. you know thousand dollars that it would give them the freedom to. I agree. Well, I yeah. agree, but usually we have to dedicate what it is. Um, okay. We can go next door and have that conversation if you yeah. like. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are, is, are, you, I'm ready. are you making a motion to <laughs> yes. adjourn? <I'm>, no, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. We got a couple other items. Oh. No. So, can I just hit on these? Yes. Real quick? Sure. Yes. So, yes. Um, the planner salary has been uh, reduced a bit. Uh, Wendy looked at that again, and and she felt we would come in at a uh, grade five, step three, and not up to a step six. She thinks she there's somebody out there that would maybe be able to do it at that. And I know that's still going to be a discussion on. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to drag this on. I just. I, I I talked with Dick about this some time ago, and, and I thought the planner idea was a good idea mm -hmm. to to help you know the town hall function. And, and I've, and I've sp expressed this to Wendy and to the finance committee. And you know, somewhere along the line, it's, it's gone from, you know, a, a part-time position to nearly a full-time position, you know. And that's why I, I was just wondering why. So, I, mean. I, I don't know. Well, uh, um, my understanding, let me, let me just say why Wendy, I think, set this up for much. Because I, I agree, we started out as a part-time position. And I'm, I'm just saying that... Um, you had talked it, about it as a part-time position to supplement what actually Dick does, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing, and to help us make sure we have some um, 
someone or some point person to handle when b people have business issues, you know, right. coming in. But um, what this planner is is encompassing now is Pat Smith's job, which we pay um, the FERCOG um, for the planning board assistance from, I think, around $15,000 last we, year. We, we do, but I... I, I so you would, this I, person I, would be that person plus. Well, I, that's why uh, I don't think Steve that would work Barrett, like that. Well, well, Steve Barrett had um, oh, from the Conservation Commission had said that, you know, he would could really use some. He um, definitely staff. could. He definitely could. And and, and that's so I what, think that's I'm, what this I was is looking at. From. This part time person is more a planner. But uh, how's a nice way of saying it? Uh, um, a, a glorified glorified clerk, somebody that. We'll put everything together. When you start talking about what Pat Smith does, that's that is a professional planner, and that's not well, an organizer, and and that's where I think it kind of changed. Do you think a we'll need be, we'd be able to get somebody? Jeez, I, I don't think I want to support. Yeah. Well, I, I think in the well, beginning, I mean, any one of us, you know, we're, I'm not going to say we're planners, but if if you were given the task that say, if Joe Smith comes in and he wants to build something. And he wants Walking to know everything. Through. It might take you a few days or a week to read through our bylaws, but you'll get this, the building thing, the uh, all the things that they need oh, to I do, know. put it yeah. in a package. And so when they come in, once you've done that, then that's done. Somebody comes in, this is what you need to do. And then you might have to walk them through the process. And, and the concept of this was like, Steve is a good example. You know, it's, it's voluntary mm -hmm. and he's not here a lot. The other thing is, you know, you have a building inspector who's busy on a lot of different things. If somebody comes into his office and starts asking all these questions that takes time away from what he can do, or if he's into a conversation with the person for, say, 40 minutes, and he looks at his watch and says, you know, I'm sorry, i got to run. i got an appointment up at DA, for example. You know, that person doesn't get all the information. And, so, and that's, that's what I was trying to bridge this gap of, you know, taking some of the pressure off of the staff people, getting better help for people coming into it, and getting them all the information at once. Because what I've seen on the planning board a lot of times is that somebody will come in with an application and, you know, oh, we're here and what do you do? And the, the, they'll ask a couple of questions. Well, no, nobody told me about that. Yeah. Well, this is what you got to do. We'll here. see you next month. And, it, yeah. and so then they come back and they, oh, well, it's, no, you got to do this too. Well, that's not what they told me in next month. And then the planning board will say, well, what did the Z be it? You know, and, and this is what happens. So, and I, my vision was that, and also as as almost a, a cheerleader for the town to be able to kind of bring in economic development. Definitely. But De do you but think that I'm would? I'm not sure. I want to really pay for more clerical support because that's oh. actually adding more people. It's it's not. Whereas I was thinking more of of an actual professional, like Pat Smith kind of person. And and and, and I I understand that, and that's why I was thinking something that would be you know like three days at six hours or something like that, because hmm. six hours is a good time to get somebody in here and do that. Th there's not, I mean, this is not Actually, I was thinking about Agawam, and we right. don't have uh, an expansive right. commercial no, area. I, I agree. And, you know, they're really, there's really only about a half a dozen pieces of land for sale in this town where you can have right. commercial development. Right. Now, redevelopment and stuff like that, that's something different. But that's why I thought this is something somebody could kind of grow into. So, so how do we take it from here? Do we do we you know vote this amount and then just refine that option? Okay. To, you know, I, so we have it to play with. Play I wouldn't. With, I wouldn't want to cover. vote this amount because no, I, this is not what what we were thinking of. I mean, I'm. So, what are you thinking of? You, you were thinking no, of truly I, a more of a part time person, right? I, I, and I was, and and I was at the personnel board meeting, and you know they, and when you saw the job description that Wendy. You know, mm -hmm. it was quite, have here. it's quite extensive, you know, yeah. and then you think, well, you know, if somebody's going to have to meet all those qualifications, they're not going to work for this anyway. That's right. That's what so, I was afraid of. So you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Well, I was and, hoping that we could get someone who was interested, you know, that was retired yeah. and that was interested in a part, very part-time job that to supplement their retirement because they were still wanted to be active and, you know, had more right. or less it, recently retired. You, you, so you would get a huge amount of expertise right. for... And, and I agree with that. And I like, and I've always liked that there's two ends of this employment spectrum that I like. One is the retiree that mm -hmm. has time now yep. with the experience, or you get a younger person that's in school for this type of thing that wants a good part-time job, right. you know? and. I, I, I like right. that because, you know, I, young I, people, do you remember that young girl that applied for the um, Wendy's job? 
You know, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I think she was a real go-getter. Absolutely. You know, and th th there might, I'm sure that there's a lot of young people like that out there. You know, are they going to be long-term employees of Deerfield? Probably not. But, you, you know, they're the kind of people that would fire up, and they're the kind of people that would pound the pavement and, you know, do some of well, the Well, that was why I was, I was um, you know, like for our MVP program, you know, the Municipal Vulnerability mm -hmm. Um, preparedness program that we just went through. We had Chris Curtis, who just retired from Pioneer Valley mm -hmm. Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 for the small amount of grant money, yeah. he was able to do this fantastic job. You, you mm -hmm. were there, so you, yeah. it, it, he really facilitated a good meeting. Um, so well, I mean, that's you, kind of who I had in mind, that type so of person. Was, what do yeah. you think for dollar amount? What do I mean? I what do you want to do then? You bring it under nineteen dollars an hour. I mean, nineteen. I, I mean, I, I don't think you can move. Thing, I don't think you can do the change the rate, but we could certainly change the hours. I don't. But does the, and then how does where does the um, benefits come in? Is that anything that, over t twenty hours or more? So if we did eighteen hours, that would be. That's three, six hours. Right, and I think you can work 19 hours uh, for when you're retired, right? Well, when it's a start, and if we okay. don't find anybody, we may have to revisit our yeah. plan. But um, so, do you want to wait and you, talk to Wendy next week well, about if, it, or do you just? I, if, I just did. Make? If you did uh, the 18 times, so I'm just going to do 26. It's easier because that was 2650. Okay, um, times 52. That comes in at about uh, 25,000 something. That so. Right along, I was thinking, you know, thirty, thirty-two thousand. I mean, it's not a big savings, but I well, this I, is I think, a huge jump. This is a huge jump. But the the big part for and me I, and is I don't want the, to the benefit clerical. part of it too. Right. And that's where it gets expensive because right. that dollar amount will jump to close to sixty-five thousand dollars if you add benefits. Right. Yes. And depending on the situation, it could be greatly increased from that too. Right. Well, and that that that's very true. But my thought was that it just I, I don't want to add a clerical person. I don't want to be paying for clerical. No, no, no. And and and, and, I, and so this, right. if you had only 18 hours, you would be being able to do the planning part, and then you would hand off the clerical. And and the thing is, it can be set up in a, in a way. I mean, because the, the building department already has clerical support, and right. we have clerical support. You're right. But so you, so once this, yeah. uh, my vision, okay. quickly is once this person gets set up with what they need. They could be downtown doing things, and and then Dick says to me, "Well, what could they if they're downtown? Somebody comes in and wants something, but it's no different than your be job there. because right. you know have a cell phone on the guy. You know, you might hey, you're out down. talking to this guy, and somebody else wants to talk to you about a project. Hey, I'll be there in a half hour, whatever. Right. And right. The same thing could happen here. Hey, I'm, I'm in the center of town. I can be there in five minutes. You got yep. time? Otherwise, I can meet you at three thirty. Whatever. Exactly. And if you get somebody that is involved like that, you know, and I think you can you'll get a lot more bang for your buck. And uh, well, you know, once somebody gets it start. set up, yeah. anybody can pick up where they leave off. You know, if you mm -hmm. get somebody that came in, hypothetically, they come in in May and they leave next November. But in the meantime, they've developed all these packages and stuff in the protocol. And whether it's Kyle, Dick, or Priscilla, anybody saw. So you get the next person in, they can pick up where this person kind of left off. No, I, I, I agree so 100%. Because I, 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 I was uncomfortable with the whole thing. Well, my guess before we vote anything, do you want to just discuss this with, with Wendy and maybe have her adjust these this dollar amount or whatever and then vote again well, on we next can, week or do we you can vote we do that I don't, okay. I don't care I mean, or we can vote, doesn't make any we difference can vote or reduce the amount and then just bring it up again next week when she's here I'd like to get her input on yeah, it because okay. she has put a lot of work no in it okay. to, to yeah. no that's fine all right um, so the, do you want to do um, frontier because Kip you yeah. didn't go to the meeting last night um, I won't get into that. <laughs> I know. I, you're on that committee, right? For yes. The, yeah, but that's that's different. I know, but they said that they were going to have a capital plan by next December. Yes, yes. I, I took. Do you think that's going to work out? Does it seem like it's um, going to work out time-wise? I'm only oh, asking. Oh, time-wise, I do. I think it's going to take. You know, I, I I I have the same approach with them as I did with Skims. Um, you, you know, you you. you I think too many times their want gets in the way of their needs, mm -hmm. you know, and all these things are important, but it's like, to what extent do you, do you deliver, you know? I mean, well, you can buy a comfortable chair for $100, or you can spend $2,000 on a chair, and it, 
you know. I mean, we were, I went in, one of the things I'll, I'll speak to is that I went and looked at the gym floor. And I'm looking and I'm walking around and I asked him, I says, are there any loose boards here? Are there any cracks? I mean, soft spots? You know, why do you want to replace this floor? You know, just, why not just sand it and put more urethane on it? Well, that's what we do. But it's getting at the end of its life cycle. Well, well what's the end of a life cycle of a wood floor? I mean, did they, how did they determine that? Because it's 25 years old. You know, and that's, that, that just blows my mind. So they I mean, I'm yeah, at the end of my life cycle too, but I mean, it's like, <laughs> So we, I'm going to take as many as I can, you know. Okay. Like, uh, what the heck? Uh, do you um, want to make a motion on this? Or do you need uh, a motion? Or? Um, oh. I was hoping it was coming in lower than this. but What is this? Oh, this, this is, is the a, Frontier's budget. I, I, I kind of would like to table it and see what we can talk to them about. Because there was, I don't know. Of course, there really wasn't much discussion last night so, or the other night. Right. So what do you want to do? Uh, this, now this is just our portion of Frontier's yes. budget. Mm -hmm. But s since we we pay fifty, almost fifty percent, don't we? Forty-eight. No, we pay uh, over. I think we're we're a little bit over. Are we? For fifty something. Yeah. Well, so even if you double that, that's only seven million dollars. I, I say only, mm -hmm. but isn't that what our elementary budget is? No, elementary is four or five, but we're I four something. Four something. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the only thing um, I just wanted to discuss was um, there's, I think they had 623 students, mm -hmm. and um, 160 are um, school choice. And it, it's wonderful that, you know, people are choosing to choice into Deerfield or Frontier. But, you know, just like we had discussions with the elementary school. Um, the problem is it costs $17,000 right. to educate a student, regular ed, not special ed. <laughs> special ed is paid yep. in addition to school choice if, if the student is um, special ed. But it's about $17,000 exactly. for regular ed, and we only that. collect 5000 So what you're doing is you're encouraging, you know, staff so, expenses. You you're, you have you would think that... Okay, so I mean, I know what the government does, but it's like, you know, people in communities that don't want to well, pay no. for a good education send their kids to communities that the citizens do want to pay for good education. So, And the state only gives you 5000 for it. Yeah. State, well, the problem is... But what about the towns where the kids come from? They, what do they pay? Do they have to pay to the state? No, no, no. What know. happens is, like Greenfield, the state pays a certain amount for each kid. Yeah. In Deerfield, it's like 3700 3, or 3200 or something like that. In Greenfield, it's 10000 or $11,000 right. per student. So what happens is when a student from Greenfield comes to Frontier, yeah. Greenfield, the town of Greenfield, has to pay the town of Deerfield $5,000. The town, I mean, the state of Massachusetts does not pay Greenfield that ten or eleven thousand dollars or whatever it is they mm -hmm. get from the state. So the state is like there's no encouragement from the state to Sure because improve, in a sense school when choice a, when a because they're the only winner in that situation is the state, state. because they never pay Greenfield. They pay Greenfield loses Green, and Deerfield loses. Gre Greenfield loses that eleven thousand dollars per kid plus they had to pay Deerfield five thousand. And we are paying twelve thousand dollars in addition to it's supposedly awful. on the average. Obviously, if you're filling in slots and it gets to a much classroom, worse when it gets to. But my concern when it gets to and charter this schools. And this is this is not. And charter schools are like you pay twenty. We have no choice. Mm -hmm. We pay twenty, uh, or whatever it is. It's very uh, different schools charge and, and different the whole, amount. And the whole thought behind this is to well, spread. charter schools r are ripping or undermining public education. They but, are. But what I'm it's saying is, Kip, That's what I'm saying thing. is what I wanted, the reason why I wanted to just hold on this a little bit is because I think that we have to have some kind of discussion about the 160 students as a percentage of the 623. Mm -hmm. Are we actually filling classroom seats that are empty or are we incurring Other staff. health benefits, right. retirement? And well, salaries for additional classrooms of the 160. I, that was my only question, and um, I, I just felt we we need to just have an open discussion, not as anti 
right, education, right. not that we're not going to support this budget, but let's just, just have the conversation. conversation okay. of and how, and I agree with it, but it's I, I agree with you. It's just hard. I find it hard for myself to have that type of discussion because it's easy for me to say, hey, you know what? You've got too many employees, but I'm not there every day. I don't right. understand. You don't what understand goes into what all the, and it, the it's requirements one of, are. It's one of these things that you have to trust them. You know. Oh, yeah. and, I understand. And it isn't. I know. Well, I'm, well, this you know, is I've not an anti-education. I've learned a lot on the committee as well on the elementary yeah. side that you know the, the the staffing and the needs of the kids are so much greater than they were when when I went to school. Oh yeah, and, and I get that. Um, it, it's a whole different way of doing it, and you need you know, and the, the kids are coming into a world that's completely different than what we had. But what what catches my eye is um, last fall when when the elementary school opened, we were minus a principal, and the schools functioned properly for some amount of time. So it makes me think, well, if the school oh, could function. No, it didn't. It didn't. No, I it thought doesn't. it was much better. No, I mean, it's, it's better because the Tina atmosphere. stepped right in. Yeah. Um, and that also the what, what, you know, what a lot of what Tina does is a lot of the 50, um, a lot of the IEPs and the 504s and um, all of that other wraparound support and the meetings that go along with that stuff, that that's what the assistant principal did. So. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that, that needs to get done um, that you don't really think about or don't notice in all the requirements of DESE and all the prep time that they need, which they don't really get enough of. Um, it, it's been eye-opening being on that board for three years. I, I uh, guess, I, I, you know, and, and, and I was in grammar school a lot further back than you, and I mean, obviously we, we didn't have this type of thing, and, and is the nope. quality of education any better? I mean, I don't know. I, it's, it's society is, is changed. changed. So, I mean, when my kids went through, yeah. you if your kid wasn't potty trained, you didn't go to school. You didn't exactly. Go to school. Now, uh, yeah, just, now they have to change diapers and stuff. I, I, I mean, I, I'm appalled at that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you so if, the teachers I mean, it's in not the school the teachers, has, be, it's has, not the has school. been doing a lot more of that, and I don't want to just say it to your people. Yeah, I mean, sure. just all over, yeah. you know. Um, has had to step up and step in a lot more than they them used to when we were younger, yeah. and they have different issues that they're dealing with and I, socio emotional stuff that they're, yeah, the kids are dealing is, with. I have to say that I, I'm shocked at how much they have to do. Um, it's sad. It, it, is. it is sad. I wish um, we could. You know, I really and I so think this they're is, trying. They're looking at other ways, at least on elementary side, of different things to different ways to change. I, I I guess what I what what I wanted was this discussion because I sort of started talking about this a little bit at the frontier meeting budget hearing. Mm -hmm. Is that are we doing the right thing for the kids? Do we need to spend a little bit more money to make sure that what we're doing is. Um, Ready, making our kids ready when they graduate are they are they i mean one of the things that was so exciting um matt that does our tv um mm -hmm. taping he he's a member of the honor society and he was talking about how they do um you know uh go into the elementary schools and talk about the um you know frontier what they're doing at frontier and, and recruiting I, the kids recruiting and telling the kids. what they can do so they right. don't why and I, and I thought, school. oh, my gosh, that sounds so wonderful because, you know, you, we lose a certain percentage of kids to charter schools. And, we, and, to and me, even that's to the one of the things. I mean, we, we lose about a million dollars to the charter schools, mm -hmm. which is just horrendous. It's a lot and of money. It's a wicked lot of money. And so, and you, get so, any so money. you know, one of my things tonight was, uh, you know, not anticipated was to just see if um, if you guys were had consensus about um, – Using a little bit of our FCAP money, we can set it aside to do support programming or something for these kids. But anyway, um, you know, simple idea like that. But what are we doing with the schools? We're, I mean, we're kind of in a train wreck situation. We're, we only can raise our taxes two and a half percent, and our budget here is. You know, our school mm -hmm. budgets are about seventy percent of our total budget. And, and I get that, but where does I mean, so if what this happens, goes up? With if, what happens if you just say you, you take the two and a half percent you put up and say this is the money you're going to have? Do it. No, 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 you, no, no. But what I'm saying miss, is this: you, so you lay off teachers because a lot of it's staff. Yeah. And you, you, you're not you're able programming. To, you can't make your programming. You can't so, do the so, remedial math, the remedial, you know, getting these kids up to where they need for graduation levels, right. and then you get you know fines from DESE for not. 
not not doing your your due diligence to uh, to educate the kids, or you just have you know, or you start if you you start cutting staff like that, you start becoming a rep. You know, you look at what Pioneer's going through in their budget, and and the reputation that you know people were like leaving that wanting to leave that school because they just had such a deficit problem and it just it became in the papers all the time and you lose like right now frontier has such a great reputation as a good athletic you know arts um theater I mean, they got the wizard of oz coming up um so that they have a great repu represent uh, reputation and then that also adds to your property taxes because you know first thing people ask when they come to buy a house is how's your school system so if if you start you know, if you just arbitrarily cut, and then the, then the reputation of your school starts going down, it hurts everybody in the long run. But you do have to make but, it but sustainable in the long run, too. And, and I, get, I get the importance of the school, but, you know, to your point that when people come to town, they want to know how your school system is. Well, what's happening in Deerfield is our population is growing older. Mm -hmm. And so the younger people aren't here with the kids. So the yep. population of school goes down, but the cost keeps going up. And so the people... Are, are still being uh, burdened by yep. you know, the, the education. Yep, thing. They, they can be. Um, actually, the, they just did a population through 2037 or 27. The population is going to actually plateau and just stay kind of where it's at right now. It, the rumor was every, you know, it's dropping and dropping and dropping, but it truly hasn't. Um, it's actually, even at, that's where we were trying to cut the kindergartners to two, two classes. We did that one year and we've been dealing with the ramifications of that, if the teachers kind of go up through the classes, um, moving everybody around, but the population actually has staying pretty stable. Has anybody from the school committee say, and I'm just sure maybe not on camera, but yeah. Waitley and Deerfield merging together? We have to, we talked about that the actually, other night, that, you know, there has been discussion of, you know, trying to regionalize. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we regionalize our high school, but how about the elementaries? Can we make and, a magnet school magnet out of one school? school that's, one of the schools. You know, it's a STEM, you know, math, science, math. Um, you know, Waitley's percentage of, of school choice is much higher. Much higher. Much, much higher. Much higher. Um, and so it may, would make sense to do something. But that was what... Or maybe even talk to Hatfield. Would they want to join? Or just, you know, I think there needs to be those discussions. Well, I think yeah, here the, the, the system's already there. I mean, you know, for a couple generations now, kids in Waitley, you know, come seventh grade, they've come to Deerfield. Absolutely. It's yep. not that more than, what is it, two and a half, maybe three miles from one school to the right. other? I mean, they... People in West Waitley travel further than that just to get to their school. So instead of losing kids to a, you know, a Pioneer Valley or a Four, four Corners or whatever it might be, Four, uh, four Rivers, four rivers yeah, we yeah. do a, you know, we do a, a math and science or AP classes or some sort of, you know, different, different education in one where you're, you're attracting those kids and then we, you know, bring in Waitley and Sunderland into, you know, another building or kind of mix up somehow mm. it, it's worth the conversation because it, it is not sustainable for well, 20 years out for for all three i was going to say a few, a few years ago there was this committee we put together and i actually i got really excited because i felt like it was a group that was going to think outside the box and mm -hmm. andrea lamas was um putting like the group together with a grant and but then it just sort of fell apart and it's I, hard because nobody wants to lose I their know. elementary school i know i mean think of how hard it was for deerfield and I know, just to join. Just to get to join. So, but it, the only but reason I want to have some, some point. is just to have some discussion and make sure we're actually funding something Our, down the road a yep. little bit. Because I feel like okay. if, if we can... I'll hold on a week. Um, if we continue with this percentage kind of increase, just to maintain status quo, my question is, is status quo really good enough? And, mm -hmm. and should we be putting money aside for something that's really interesting and, mm -hmm. and would maybe avoid this train wreck that's coming, basically. So, Do you want to vote the transportation? Yes. I, um, I, it didn't sound like there was much we could do about it. Right. It was just... It is the allocation, so... Yeah. Make a motion to approve the Frontier Transportation at 70386 for FY19. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, just a second, that's three zero. Trevor. And then we have the Franklin County Tech Assessment, um, which has gone down this year. Yep. Um, so 
I make a motion to approve the Franklin County uh, Tech School uh, assessment for FY19 at uh, $255,451. I'll second the motion. Does anybody know how many kids are involved in that? Um, that's why it went down. It's, it's oh, based on the number of kids. This brings me to another item is you, that, and I'll say out to the public, that our Franklin County Tech School needs a, um, a, representa a, rep uh, represent a representative, representative from to sit on the board, Deerfield yeah. to sit on the school committee. So as much as I would love to dig into that, I don't know if I can take on another. Another position, but don't you have Friday nights available? I may have Friday nights available. Um, <laughs> so, uh, if anybody out there would love Sorry, to get involved with that, it's a great school. <laughs> um, I would love, you know, we'd love to have representation. We need, we need somebody representing us there. Uh, so, please step you, up. How many kids are involved in that? Do you know um, from Deerfield? You yeah. mean? I can tell you. It is, it is an individual body based type. Okay. It's, it's it's per per kid expense. Do you remember how many we had? Towards the back. Oh, is this? Wait a second. Well, we're just getting we're good rolling conversations. Here. It doesn't um, get good here until nine o'clock. I don't the, have it um, here. Sorry. Frontier budget. No. Okay. Neither do we. We're going to sit on that for another week. I, I don't know what I did with it. Um, if you sit on it too long, it'll get bigger. Transportation? We just we did, should, we just did that, too. Um, I, I have it. That's kids. all right. I don't know I, where it's it is, not but that I point. I'm just it. curious. It, it tells us. I've got a whole idea. sheet of where our kids are coming from yeah. and then where they're going. To. Is this tech school in the ballpark of the ones like 15000 per kid? Uh, I could... I could look right, it up. Never mind. I'll look it up and I, you know, tell you. Bit, I like to ask the questions because I want some background. It's a little bit more expensive yeah. than okay. elementary you, school. You don't need, I don't need to know that bad. That's and okay. now they have a capital request. They've been working. I think they came to a town meeting maybe a year ago or two years ago and with the work that they've been working on and doing. Which um, is, so it's a new line on. Yeah, a lot it's of work. Well, we didn't, we didn't vote this, you guys. you got to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, do you want to do the capital expense? Yes. So I... I want to vote to approve the Franklin Tech Capital at sixteen thousand five hundred and twelve dollars for FY nineteen. You're in a second, okay. So they have not actually been spending on capital for a while, but they came before our town meeting last year. I want to say, or was it two years ago? And they've they've been kind of laying out these projects to do some of the work since that school's Similar been built. Frontier. So this is our share of that. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um. And then uh, we have transfer station expense. Where is that? I'm, um, I'm, I'm still. Uh. The the trash compactor though is we're going to buy the trash compactor. So. Um, we said, we said yes to all those if you, if you can. Did you, I, I think there's going to be a, a little bit of an adjustment to this because of the, we are buying the con compactor. Are we buying it? So, uh, but, uh, but this is for this I, year, I, though, we right? We were told to close the purchase of the compactor and moving it. Mm -hmm. Do we have it on here? Though? Where, where are you well, a machinery it's rental, a, I think, is rental. the compactor. But I think they're probably going to need to rent it for a while this year, right? Or until they... Is that what that means? I think. But it wouldn't be just $1,600. Yeah, it'd probably be more than that. That's got to be other items out there. It's going to be something different. I don't know. I thought that was it. I don't know. They went down 13500 13, I know. We're, we're almost breaking even on that, yeah. believe it or not. I still Which is tremendous. I still we, don't understand why we pay $3,000 to get rid of the scrap metal when we could make money on it. We do make money on it. We just, there's, What's doesn't the show, just doesn't show okay. what we, uh, that comes back the revenue in the check. Comes back. I'm sorry. It comes back to general um, fund. So I make a motion to approve the transfer station expense. I'll second the motion. Um, is there that any was further discussion? That was $174,000. Yeah. yeah. I still second it. <laughs> Aye. 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 
Wait, I haven't finished this. We're heavy. Okay. I know you are. Okay. Let's yeah, see if we can't go faster. The question on the Quebec was that was in the capital improvement budget. It was. Yes. Yeah, I, there's nothing on here. I, she no, just, there's nothing in there. There was well, a no, 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 no. machine I was rental. Just I, wanted, what I, was. I was wondering if the, because we rent the compactor now, and I wasn't sure if we were. Maybe that's discussion. something else they use. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I hadn't, you know, Kevin hasn't been well, so I, have, I, don't, I didn't answer, get that answer. So we'll um, get it. The, were we going to do, uh, let's see, <coughs> we weren't going to do the test wells yet because that was going to get adjusted. Yeah. Um, um, wastewater treatment salaries and expense. Um, Seven percent. Um, where's the wastewater? Where is that one? Oh, that's all the way in the back. Right here. It's, um... Oh, here it is. Okay. So the salaries uh, are here at the expense. Um, this is not going to include. This doesn't include um... any of the work that we've done down there. No. Okay. Because it needs a ton. So make a motion to approve the wastewater treatment department salaries uh, for FY19 at $265,210. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Mm. Aye. My question is on the expense. Um, these are just, just the stuff to run it, obviously not to repair. I know we've had some damage to the clarifier because of ice this year. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't we need to get working on that. I can't wait for next week's meeting. Um, a lot of this raise is, is the sludge this year, right? Yes. I and mean, it's just a huge increase. Well, um, Greenfield may be able to do that, get that grant for the sludge. I don't know if that's good. Bruce, do you know what the, uh, at the wastewater treatment plant, the engineering consulting consultant is all about? Um, yes, I believe that they wrote their, uh, there was a report due December 30th of last year. Then they rewrite the uh, annual report to the state. They assist in writing that. Okay. okay. Yeah, how much how much is the value? Thirty two thousand dollars. Oh the, they're also um, I mean I, I as far as I know they uh, it was proposed to do some additional work on the pump station. Yes. In Kelleher. Yes. I believe that was part of this design. They hired oh, okay. The guy that did the sewer study? Yep. Or they plan to hire him? I don't know. I have to be honest, I've been away from it so long. Do you want, to, okay. do you want to hold on that then? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I sure hope that's not the case because... We did approve the money already to do that work. To do that, yeah. And to, so uh, we can just ask... I know Wendy wanted to speak to this and she wasn't here tonight, yeah. so we could wait. We can wait. We could wait on that one week. There's... Uh, so that's good. So this is a hold. Um, but we're holding on. We're fine. We're holding I, I, on the expense, and I, we're I holding on the. Um, I, I, we need to have a conversation about that pump station maintenance at ninety thousand dollars. I mean, the cost to put in uh, a good grinder pump and have that whole thing updated was sixteen thousand dollars, and uh, I, I just for the, for the uh, Captain Lake. If you mean? Yeah. If that's the pump station maintenance they're speaking of, and I don't think we have it's another. Only one we have. It's the only one we have, so I, you know. So we'll, 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 we'll talk to him when he comes back. Yep. Put okay. a plug it in until everybody to get, get their own. Get their own. So. And that's all we have right now, right? We Dick held on the, the planner. Put a tank in. Yeah. We're holding on. Well, there's a farm behind it. We'll put a digester there. The the we pass the assessment. But so, so how do, do you want to <coughs> do you want to bring up? the frontier thing in a positive way. I mean, how do we have a conversation to make it, something happen? Um, well, I'll, 
Well, I know I'll see Patty next week because I think we have a meeting. I mean, I can talk to Lynn. I don't know. I'll talk to him about it. Yeah, do you, I mean. Do you know offhand when their contracts come up again at the um, high school? Frontier? Oh, oh, I think They're, this For is all the, of their insurances I and labors. And this year, I think. And that's the school committee, Frontier School Committee is the one that and does I, that? I, and I would imagine Frontier and Deerfield are on the same schedule. I'm not positive about know. that, but I don't know. I think, I know that, I think Deerfield is up this year, but. Maybe, Skip, do you know? Do you know when the contracts are up for teachers? And are they, are they both elementary and Frontier? The only reason I'll, I might know is that I may have to oh, Okay. I was thinking it was this was the last year, and so we had to start negotiating again. Um, I, I think 2019 uh, is the, the last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the middle year, I think. Oh, okay. School committee. It wasn't that long ago. I don't have frontiers, so. I don't okay. Know. You're not sure if they're the same, or, and, but I, and I, I truly don't know. But is it the school committee who negotiates the contract? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. We have a representative. Or, 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 well, the yes. other ones. It's the right. school we, committee the, that approves the selectmen. Yes. Do we have like have a, a hired? Well, person that's well, that does this yes, a yes. There is, a, there is. They have a, they have a labor lawyer. Who, who, I mean, in the past, we've had Gordon Oaks was representing yep. us. Yeah, Gordon was there once, uh, and that year, there was somebody from each one of the towns. So right. we did, and and. Uh, Fred, and uh, Tom Feinkevich usually represents us as a select board. And and the question that I've got is, why don't why doesn't each town have a representative at Frontier? Right. Yep. I'm I'm not sure why. I, is I, it in the? I thought we had one representative. Agreement or something or? No, no, no. This is this came in, in state law that, okay. the, that the towns had up until that point in time, and you know, when I was on the school committee, you know, we didn't we didn't want anybody from the town involved in it at all. Of course not. But the but the you know the state said you know each town can put a put a representative on there. But in the final analysis, it's the school committee that votes the contract. It but at least you get get your two cents worth. It. Right. Um. Okay. Yeah. We should. We'll check. Up. Anyway. We'll see. Yeah, Let, we'll work on that. And, and let's, if you could talk to Patty and Lynn, maybe we could figure out, you know, a positive. I mean, this has to be, no yeah, doubt this, about I want this to be positive. Yeah, uh, of course. It's not a negative thing. Of course. But, um, you know, we got to do, do something. And we only have anybody's interest is until we sign off on the bottom line. So. Right. So the warrant, um, annual town meeting warrant, um, the reminder that the warrant will be closed March 28th. Uh, so to have a draft, you know, and she's got a draft and work. Is that when you're pro. closing the warrant, the 28th? 28th. Yeah. Okay. Right now, that's what we're thinking of. Um, or, the, or the day before you need anything. Pardon? Or the day before you need anything. Yeah. Well, I, I've, got, I've already got something in there. It's too late. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Give me a chance, everyone. <laughs> and uh, the only the other thing that I just wanted to make sure oh that road yes we we were going where was that I don't know I saw it <coughs> I did too where What's did that? this um we look at uh, the road Ridge Road what did you guys oh, want to, um, I did speak to, I spoke to that in um, in oh, Wendy's, Wendy's report okay so she, we've been asked and she wants us to schedule. It's on the schedule. It's, on the, it's schedule. on the schedule. So we're going to do the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Um, the only other thing I wanted to do is I, next Tuesday I set up a meeting with um, Glenn Ohan uh, from the Franklin Regional Housing Authority. He's going to come over and see if he can do some needs assessment for us and work <coughs> on, you know, the senior. Uh, just so we're kind of have an idea of what's going on, maybe. Um, when we okay. get to church, because it just—I don't know what's taking so long, and but we should be ready to go, and it would be helpful if we had some guidance. And I had also called Linda Dunlevy, um, and told her that you know we were looking for some help and money, and we didn't have the building yet, but we wanted some help. So she was reaching out to st on the state level, and trying to use the approach that we have a regional senior center, and that. Regionally, we right. had a huge need, and yep. we, 
and I took the opportunity to say we were interested in increasing the programming to like five yep. days and we're looking for more meal service, on-site meal service mm -hmm. versus just delivery. Yeah. Um, you know, some of that stuff to like see where the money was at right. and what we could pursue. But I mean, um, I love I love Bernardson's model when we went to visit that. I mean, that was, and know. that was the other thing. I didn't know. I just wanted you because we have, we never get the chance to just talk about stuff. <laughs> right. What I wanted to know because we were so um, impressed with our visit in Bernardson that um, Diana Cornwell had retired just just recently. Yep. And of course, Marlene is leaving. That's right. And um, we're sad to see her go. By the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Um, just done thank good you, work Marlene, over the last for doing couple everything. Years for our seniors. Um, so I was thinking um, the reason why Trevor and I were so impressed with Diana, she worked, used to work for John Oliver, you know, our uh, congressman. And so she knows all these programs, the senior programs. And I, we were wondering, or I was wondering, if, if I had reached out to her, if you guys would be supportive of um, having her work with us for a little bit and try to search for some money and help us figure out some programming. I think that would sure. be, I think it would be a good idea. She she, said, she know, was just good advice and she really she, knows her stuff. She, and then I have to say I was so impressed We're going to need to search for somebody sure. anyways. It yeah. might be a good medium. You know, at least have her Why put not? her eyes on stuff and right? see what she thinks. Well, I, I wanted more. to see if she'd be interested and then obviously Trevor has we to go to, to the, the board, board of oversight and, and yep. sort out all that. But yeah. I just I figured that it'd be worth you know a call what? and see what she's up to, and yeah, you know, she and, can't and put much hours in. But if she could do some, and yep. she would just give us both. some guidance yep. because the, the the programs at, in Berniston were just amazing. And part of it was it was all funded by different yep. group, uh, sorts of money without the town actually having to support it. Mm -hmm. and it was. It was like so impressive, wasn't it? Trevor? Yeah, it was. It so was nice okay. Meal and good people. So I, I will, ahead. if as long as you guys, I don't think okay. we need to vote on it, but That's um, good. I'll reach out to her and see what we can do, and um, so we have and 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 follow up with Linda Dunlevy and see what she can do. And if you if you could, it's it's eleven o'clock next Tuesday. Um, um, if you're if if you're around, what's eleven o'clock? Next oh. Tuesday is Glenn coming. He's just oh, going to oh. talk about. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. It's okay if you can't come back. I'll see if I can, but if you, I'm not yeah. sure if I'll be able to. But, um. It's Glenn. It's this is how you spell his name. O L H U N D. Oh, okay. That's here. See, he's 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 the person that's working on the Sunderland project. Yep. It'd be good to chat yeah. with him. Uh, Bruce said he's been there what seven or eight months. Oh, we have to Glenn? sign the warrants. Yeah. Okay. And then we we have public comment. Yep. Um, we just have one item left. Public comment. Is there anybody? Any? Yes. Yes, Bruce. Oh. <laughs> well, I just have one question. Just one. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. We're, we're sitting here saying, no, it's not one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he never has to say. Time's uh, up. I know that I've talked to Carolyn several times. I know where Henry stands, Trevor. Okay. But uh, many times you have said that you would consider reducing the CPC rate to uh, 1%. Uh, yet I've got the minutes from the uh, uh, community preservation uh, mm -hmm. Uh, committee that uh, you were in favor of keeping a three percent rate. Correct. Yes, yep. because I I had I thought once um, Boston joined that we had dropped way low, but um, we still got a four, we've been getting um, almost close to fifty percent. So you've changed your mind? Exactly. Yeah, Can I, I didn't. Answer too? Oh sure. I I did change my mind a little bit because I you know I was talking and I thought you know what you know if we're not getting as much back. When I did what nope. I did. Um, when I was in that meeting and, and I saw the rate of return we're getting on our money, it's like the best deal in town. I'm trying to think, the, I don't know where else you get that kind of a rate of return on your investment. So I know it's a tax to people, um, but, the, but the amount of match that you're getting back and the rate of return you're getting, as opposed to like having our money sitting with Bartholomew I, or something like that. So I totally, I totally yeah. agree with that as far as the rate of return. Yeah. What I disagree is the fact that it is a tax it keeps going up without any 
choice by anybody because mm -hmm. it is a surcharge based on 3%. Yep. We worried about people can't pay their sewer bills, but let's tax them more with the CPC. I mean, well, you know, we're talking on both sides of our face. Uh, and, uh, Bruce, you know, Bruce, if we're trying just to keep wait. this town affordable. Bruce, please listen. We get, uh, even with Boston joining, and they are trying to come up with ways that we can get back up closer to more of a 100% match. But you have to realize homeowners, not businesses, but homeowners get 100000 exemption on their first $100,000 of value. Right. So it's fairly progressive. And the people have have uh, the ability to have some progressiveness in the tax rate, and that money is going into a pot that we hope will pay for our um, senior housing and our community center. And it is really important that we have that. We've been squirreling away that money. And, I, understand, and, I understand where you're coming. And, I and just, it's going I to just, be a town expense, and the, and the majority of the money in there has is from. I mean, we ha yes, the town has paid into it, but we've ha been able to on most occasions to get a match, a full match for our money over year and for all the years that we've had that. Uh, it's only been there's only recently. Been, there's only been two years that we've actually got a hundred percent match. Yes, but, but and I understand and I understand. But it's close to hundred percent match. Even twenty five or right. thirty percent is a huge match. Yeah. However, by, as I said. Part of the problem is we just keep taxing people more and more, and you're the first one to jump up and down it. Oh, well, there's people that can't pay their sewer bill. There's people that, but, you know, and the property tax will raise up. They can't pay their sewer bill, but we'll raise the property tax up. And that's wrong thinking. You're either going to support the people that can't afford the taxes, or you're going to support more taxation. One or well, the other. I'm, Bruce, I'm, I'm Bruce, both as well I, I Bruce, I, we, we know we're going to do senior housing and we're going to do this community center it's coming right. so instead of doing a um an ex you know a, a tax uh exemption um we're going to do you know and and put it on the ballot and, and have people vote for it we're, we're going to put toward money towards it we're saving money towards it just like we put money aside for the ambulance we're I putting understand. money aside and the state is contributing to that let I me, so, so let me, I, what I'd like this, to this is going nowhere. But, well, uh, but what I'd like to inject into this is that, you know, this is like a lot of things that's come before our community. And, you know, I try to do my darndest to work for the community, everybody. And this is something that should go on the town floor. People should have an opportunity to vote on it once again. If the people still think that it's you know, worthwhile, then they'll vote yes. Exactly. And if they feel that it's not worthwhile, they'll vote no. I don't see the harm of letting the people choose. I, that's my point. I mean, you know, we, we all, I, I, we have a certain role here, but we're not dictators. Correct. We need to let the people make the choices. It, our job is to put the information in front of them and let Kip, them make the I choice. I don't have a problem. If people right. want, it's then just Then why that can't I'm not we put the article on there? It, it, it's not that wasn't that wasn't the question. No, the, the question no, that was wasn't the question. He was asking me why I changed my mind. Right. Okay. And that and was the I question. I changed okay. my mind because it's still a good deal, and we absolutely are having projects coming into town. All right. So then you would you would support uh, it be an article on it for town meeting? Well, well I mean, if the board supports you it, you don't yes. you don't have to agree with it, and I and I get that. Just like you and I don't agree on the mosquito. Thing. I didn't mean for this to get into that discussion. Yes, no, no, I did, did bro. I'm yes, going you to have did. an informational <laughs> night on mosquitoes, and well, I will hope you guys will come because it really is as as trying to be proactive and to cut our expenses if, if down. If we join it with a CPA discussion, will you show? Them. Yes. <laughs> what? Well, hey, we have some other questions oh, here. Hands are up. Yeah. Uh, oh, jeez. I started right. Uh, I believe. I'm done. Started... No, Kip missed this. I started a second. Oh, no, oh. that's Kip missed that one. I started writing down. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Your your signature. Bruce is waiting. Uh, I believe uh, CPA funding uh, allows for seniors to be get an exemption from that tax. Yeah. Yes, there is. I think it. Uh, but it's income driven. A hundred thousand. Uh, there is an exemption based on uh, 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 income. income. Yes, we have. We have. Yeah. So when I was a senior, you can come in and get 
exemption to CPA the tax? Yes. Okay. Yes. Full exemption. Okay. And based on income. Only. Yes. Same as the real estate tax. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. I okay. I forgot about with, uh, to say that. Kip, though, that I, 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 myself, and I think a lot of other people in town like to see that on the board. Let them have the opportunity to vote on it. And if they approve it, great. You know, and if so they be don't, it. then so be it. But that's, that's you know, it, it's something that should come forward if, to the people. If you are, or guys are open to the fact that we are really trying to do these projects because, you know, we, we, there would be a debt exclusion on, on senior housing and our community center. I know, but we, we have talked about those projects for some time now, and I hope they go forward, but they don't seem to be moving. Well, we don't own the church yet, right. and that has been, you know, 18 months of waiting that we didn't anticipate. There's not a lot you can do about that. But I didn't believe the senior center was eligible. Senior house, senior center was eligible for CPA funding. It would be if we do historical renovation. On the exterior. What whatever we need to do we have on to get the, that whether, out. whether I think when, when I asked them the other day. If that's the only thing you're gonna get. Right. Well, you're not gonna get it's not gonna be but also. but you got the steeple steeple re um, yeah, then you then you have restrictions once you do that without doing something inside you're restricting use of that entire building i asked that and he, they said no so i'm curious to get a solid answer on that yeah the exactly. interpretation Bruce. <laughs> the no, interpretation no, you, i mean well probably yes because the people okay. would love to hear so um, they, they were under the impression because i asked that question i said well so if we use it for the steeple does that you know, can we do anything else because to that the was, building? I, no. I had originally put in money for the steeple because I figured we're going to save the steeple whether we have a building underneath or not. We're going to save the steeple with the town clock. And so I figured we could use CPA money for the steeple. And okay. The, the, the way I read it is you can use the uh, money either inside or in outside. Okay. If you just choose to do it outside, it does not uh, prohibit you from doing things on the inside, right. whatever, what, and vice versa. If you choose to do things on the inside, then, and not on the outside, you want to change the outside, that could be too, too. But the problem being is, is anything you do do has to be done by the Department of Interior standards of mm -hmm. preservation. Right. Which will automatically triple or quadruple anything you want to do. Bruce, it has been done, though. It has been done. It right has there. been done. Many, uh, it's all, all through the state. Uh, and I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it has I, not I'm, been done. I'm going to meet with Glenn to get started on this, because we don't know. But we can certainly use it for housing. And if we use yeah. it. Housing, yes. But, and if we build senior housing in the existing senior building area, or building, whatever, some combination. You certainly would use that money right up. And that would be wonderful to have some units because as I talk, as we've reached out to the Regional Housing Authority, when you do less than 20 or 30 units, you have a premium cost that nobody really wants to build. But if we have our pocket of money, we could do 8 to 10 or 12 units in that space. There again, we're getting off the question I asked. I know exactly, as I said, I'm not doubting the oh, return. Okay. I'm not doubting the return. Okay. I think it's a great return. I sat there seven years as an assessor. I saw piles of exemptions right there. People that can't afford anything. And you're asking them to just keep paying. No, and they can get an exemption. And that's, no. They, they, they can apply. If they have applied for a tax abatement, then they, uh, and an exemption. Have you ever tried to fill one of those applications out? That's it's, why we have an outreach. The problem is, is they are so intimidating. I, I sat in that in, uh, office. They are so intimidating that it's, it's pathetic. But, Bruce, that's why we have an outreach coordinator now. But at the senior center to help with the tax Pe people, people are afraid to ask you've got to make them ask we okay? will that's, that's the part of the know. service that's they, part of the service that we need to do, uh, make sure our seniors are aware of but carol another way of looking at this is you saying we get this great match so if the town puts a million dollars in and the state gives us a million dollars that's two million dollars but if you have to restore a property like that that's going to cost 
three times as much. Instead of costing a million, it's going to cost three million. So what good was that match? We'd have been better off just paying for it ourselves. Is, is the rate of return that, like, if you just I, I, take I that it. money, you're getting good rate of return. Nowhere else That's in the That's what I just said. If you, you put in a million, that. you get a million. So you have not two quite, million. But but right, you're but, at like but, so we, we now the rate of return is a hundred percent. We put in a million, and we got a million. Not anymore, but I'm right. just giving you the top gun. So that's two million. This is simple math. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're going to restore it, and it was going to cost a million on our own, but if you use these funds, it's going to cost three million. Mm -hmm. How is it a benefit? It's not always it's that. It's not. Way. It's not how you it's set not it up. That way. Come yeah. on. No. Well, anyway, you don't have to put in. Just one other comment. Bad. Okay, instead of saving the steeple, cut it off just above the clock and put a mansard roof on and save a lot of potential uh, problems in the future. Good, good, good. All those, all those good. advices need to come. Bring That's them in. We need all that input. That way, you still money. save the clock and you would save all that height. We're, yep. we're just trying. I agree. To I don't want to get up and paint it. I, we're trying to save money. We'll go out. We're getting this organized, so we'll be ready to go. Okay. Organized. Thank you, Bruce. Well, organized. Come yes. on. <laughs> come on. Come. How are you, Mike? Need help. Doing well. Good. I'm trying to Thanks help. Thanks for sitting through our. I, I learned math in second what, grade. What two hour and a, two and a half hour meeting? I enjoyed it. I'm glad. Since the last select board meeting, many concerned Deerfield citizens have stopped by my house, commenting on the present town issues. One citizen read my entire binder, which I had offered to share with Trevor two weeks ago. Myself and some of these citizens started discussing the unequal treatment and the town's tendency to violate some individual's rights, myself included. One statue brought to my attention states, it is unlawful for two or more persons to conspire to injure, threaten, or intimidate a person in any state in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the U.S. Constitution. During an afternoon in the law library, I read, this law further prohibits a person acting under the color of the law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or customs to willfully subject or cause to be subject any person to different punishment, pains, or penalties than those prescribed to others. This act includes local officials within their bounds or limits of their lawful authority, but also acts done without and beyond their lawful authority. This town has officials pretending to act in the performance of his or her official duties and treating policies and procedures like they are mere suggestions. This pile of substantial misconduct is adversely affecting the public's interest by impairing the efficiencies of public service. Some boards in this town do not give equal protection enforcement of the law. The idea that rules should apply to the rulers as well as the rules, that used to make our government different from most others in history. Why should the public trust our officials if apparently their actions are unenforceable. I look forward to any clarifications or responses you can give me to this statement. Thank you for your comment. You're welcome. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make That's a motion. pretty disconcerting in silence. Uh, well, it's public comment. Okay, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.